Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're sorry to keep you waiting, but we can start right now. First, a warm welcome to our distinguished guests, delegates and speakers. On this very special seminar day, titled Digital Transformation, Changing the Way We Engage. It's my pleasure to welcome you this morning, on a wonderful Monday morning. I'm the MC for this morning. My name is Miki He. And I hope everyone is well rested over the weekend and look forward to this day's speech. We'll be kicking off this morning with a list of distinguished speakers who are all experts in their respective areas. There will be plenty to share this morning for you to take away with and we hope that you enjoy this morning's session. The speakers will share their experience and their wealth of knowledge at the end of it, there will be a plenary session followed by a signing ceremony of memorandum understanding between Marketing Institute of Singapore and One Smart Star Asia. To start off with, this morning, we would like to invite Mr. Roger Wang, the President of Marketing Institute of Singapore and Marketing Institute of Singapore Training Centre, to deliver his welcome address. Mr. Wang, please. Hi, very good morning, everyone. Oh, I'm, I'm not hearing response. <laughs> I know it's a Monday morning. <laughs> and uh, Monday blues, right? I think for Singaporeans. Um, so I, I'm just going to make another try. Is it okay, everyone? Hi, good morning, everyone. Wow, that's so much better. <laughs> okay, anyway, my name is Roger Wang. I'm the current president of the Marketing Institute of Singapore and Marketing Institute of Singapore Training Centre. Um, if you look at me, right, uh, well, I've been around uh, MIS for many years, for almost like 20 years. I uh, was a past graduate from uh, MIS program, uh, currently serving as a president. Um, and, and we are volunteers, lah, by the way. So, in other words, we are not paid. So, I do have my own uh, company, I run events at MICE. Um, so, thanks, Miki. Miki is actually our head of uh, uh, marketing. Uh, sorry, Head of Marketing Institute of uh, Singapore itself. So, if there's anything, right, he's a full-time staff, so please go to him. All right, so if, if you have any, uh, any uh, what, feedback on today's conference uh, that we can do better, please, please go to him. Don't come to me. Eh? <laughs> I'll still be around anyway. Okay, um, now, I, uh, well, they gave me quite a large stack of notes uh, or, or to present, but nevertheless, nevertheless, I think I want to share something uh, that happened over the past two days, in fact. Um, I don't know, um, but before I begin, um, I just want to show of hands, how many of you are our MIS members? Just show of hands, members. I know of one, just join. Thanks. MIS members? Ma'am? Wow, well, great, thanks. Anyone else? Thanks, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. So, okay, we do have uh, some of our members around and, of course, some of our uh, hopefully, uh, newly newly uh, joined members uh, after today's session. Um, just uh, just uh, some background. Please allow me to do my job as the president of uh, MIS. Just a bit of background. MIS, we are actually a not-for-profit body. We have been around for 44 years. So I hope you have heard about us before. Okay, if not, then that means we are not doing a very good job in marketing ourselves. Lah. So hopefully, after today, please pick up a form. If you can, join us as a member itself. Now, being a member, you do get a lot of benefits, such as attending events like that, okay? Um, and on another note, just a show of hands also, how many of you are actually armed with name cards today? Name cards. So, wow, quite a fair bit of you, right? Good, good. And how many of you actually, you know, uh, marketers or do some form of marketing? Can I have a show of hands? Okay, quite a fair bit of marketers over here, here. So, these are doctors, la, engineers, and lawyers. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> okay. But anyway, um, well, before I begin, we're talking about digital transformation here, right? Today. And you know what? Uh, it's always very dreadful uh, for me to carry along name cards because at the end of every session, I always like collect a big stack of name cards. Do you agree with me? Yeah. So, therefore, I think before we begin, I right, just want to do something today, something very impromptu. So, can we all stand up? Is it okay? Just, just stand up. Yeah. I'm not going to ask you to do something that. Oh, by the way, today's conference, thanks to Kerry, is sponsored by One Smart Star. So it's free, but you know, thanks, thank you. 
But you know, in this world, nothing comes free, right? Correct. So I'm going to make your work. So for the next minute or two, just go to the person in front of you, behind you, beside you, right? Just add them on LinkedIn or Facebook. After all, we are here for digital, digital transformation, okay? So just a minute. Please ensure that you have like minimum five contacts over the next one minute. Is that a deal? Can you turn on the music for me, please? Thank you. All right. Just a minute, huh? remember to add on. So we are here on Don't Pass On Name Cards. Please keep your name cards. Okay, now, um, just to share with you also something that happened to me yesterday. You know what happened yesterday? Yesterday, I think, uh, okay, one of my peers is not here. I was with uh, one of my clients, or one of my friends, so-called, uh, from China. So, so, you know Chinese, right? So, naturally, I will just bring them for lunch la, at uh, one of the Chinese restaurants in Singapore, owned by Chinese, someone from China. So... <laughs> Excuse me. Now, towards the end, right, uh, when it comes for billing time, I call for a bill. So what, what happened was that, you know what, he stand up and he said, what, let me settle the bill this time around. I was like, wow, finally, you know, I get the chance for you to settle the bill. All this while, I've been, I've been, I've been taking on the bill itself. So finally, I've got him to want to, set, to settle the bill. And I was relatively happy because that was like, you know, kind of an expensive restaurant. <laughs> So what happened was that, so when he asked for a bill, uh, he flashed out his, not card, but his handful. So he wanted to make the payment vow, we pay or Alipay. Now, unfortunately, that restaurant that owned by Chinese uh, did not have that service available. So the next question I asked him is, what about your credit cards? You know, so still quite reluctant to bring out my wallet. Huh? So um, then again, he said, you mean what? Uh, you're so primitive. Uh. We don't bring wallets, we don't bring credit cards anymore. We only pay VAL, mobile payment, gateway. And that's WePay or Alipay. So I end up having to pick up the bill again. Uh. So I wonder, you know. So <laughs> next time, uh, that gives me a lesson. Better check that place, uh, that they provide mobile payment before we head on. Now, another thing that happens to me last week. Last week, you know what happened? Um, now, before that, uh, in fact, I think uh, my, my, my trainer is here. My trainer for sponsorship, where are you, ma'am? I know, I know I met her. Too shy. Oh, yeah. Hi, ma'am. <laughs> Thanks. Now, I, I do pick up trainings from MIS. Now, if you don't know the MIS, we do offer a series of executive programs. Okay, so including me, even though I'm a president, I still do pick up training, right, ma'am? I attended your class as one of your... Yeah, trainees. <laughs> so, three months ago, I think I picked up a, a course in MIS, the fast track towards digital marketing. So I'm like, yeah, I need to pick up something like digital marketing to keep myself abreast right to what is going on. Then again, the trainer actually come back to me, you know, he come up to me and said, Roger, do you know you're a migrant? I'm like, me, a migrant? No, I'm born in Singapore. I serve my national service. So he said, no, no, you are a digital migrant. Well, after all these years, uh, I, I've never ever think about that words being used on me. So I'm actually a digital migrant. So I said, okay, then what's the other category? I said, that's the digital native. You know, digital native, those that born after the 1990s. You know, they born with mobile phones. Uh, the moment they are born out of their mother's womb, they hold on to the mobile phone. <laughs> so I said, okay, so right, I'm a digital migrant and I'm learning to be a digital native. So I can be a newly acquired digital native. But one good thing, at least I'm not a digital alien, right? Okay, so that's why I would, I would encourage, if you can, pick up, continue to learn about digital marketing. You can always pick up one or two courses from MIS itself, okay? Um, and then what happened uh, last week, in fact, I was with this author, uh, of uh, this very famous marketer. His name is called Hermawan Katujaya. I don't know if you know him. He actually co-authored uh, quite a number of books with uh, Professor Philip Kotler. So he was in Singapore itself, and this guy just celebrated his 70th birthday, you know. So we were at a restaurant as usual, you know, 
So by now, I think you should know, huh? my favorite hobby is eating restaurants. So we were at the restaurants and then he was picking up the menu and then you know, we ordered some food. So when the food came, when the dishes come, when I was about to take him to my food itself, you know what happened? He said, hold on, wait. I was like, what? You know, because I'm rather hungry. So he picked up his phone and he snapped pictures of the food. And then he sent it on his Facebook and Twitter. 70 years old. So I was telling him, wow, okay, amazing, good. So at least, you know, our migrants, we do have hope. People at 70, right? So we do have hope. So that's why today we're here to learn, right, everyone? So today, MIS, we have put forth a series or a panel of uh, digital leaders or thought leaders itself. And, uh, and of course, today we are also glad to announce our MOU signing ceremony with One Smart Star. Thank you, sir. Thank you, David and uh, Kerry from One Smart Star Asia itself and One Smart Star Private Limited. Um, you know what happened? It was sometime early this year, David, right, uh, and, and Kerry, they visited me in my office. So I was like, okay, I, know, I knew Kerry for quite a while, uh, quite a long time, in fact. But I never knew him as an as a IT solutions provider or someone. He, say, he comes to me as someone like, you know, he was from the motor trade insurance line and things like that. Never in IT. So all of a sudden he told me, hey, Roger, I'm in IT. I'm apps. I said, sure. Okay, fine. Let's listen what he has got to say. So I, I appear to be a bit enthusiastic, you know, after knowing him for quite a while. All right. So, but when David showed me the apps, one smart solutions, I was in awe. No, I was, I was like thinking, hey, this is the kind of solutions that we all need, including me, SME. So, um, and, and for MIS itself, we are always looking out for partners like that to help to cross-promote their product, which we think we deem that it will benefit the industry. Okay, so therefore today we'll be signing an MOU together with One Smart Style uh, in, in the area of collaborations, uh, including perhaps some development and some data collections itself. Hopefully, we are able to offer that solutions to our members at a better rate. Uh, please, please look out and work out a, a good deal for all our members, please. And uh, you know, after today, hopefully, we are also all being digitalized. So I, I knew some of you all didn't have a LinkedIn account, so it's okay not too late, because I'm also a late starter. Okay? No, 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 it's not an idiot. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Never an idiot. Never too late to start. <laughs> okay? All right. So um, now. Um, Hopefully, after today itself, all of us get to gain something, okay? And if you need to know more, I think please stay on. We'll be here until 1 o'clock. Uh, we probably will have a break time. And then uh, please go around adding more friends and more uh, of your peer. Okay, so having said that, I think enough of me being here. I think we, we need to listen to all our experts. So thank you for coming today and hope that we have a great day. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mr. Wang for your opening address. Our first speaker for the day is someone who is an active and deeply involved investor in a number of startup companies who are extremely innovative in the area of mass communication interactivity and electronic and digital learning tools. He is also the co-founder and CEO of One Smart Star Limited the director of One Smart Star Asia Private Limited. He's none other than Mr. David Susant. May I invite him on stage to deliver his speech on digitization and transformation, connecting better. Mr. Susant, please. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Roger Wing, for your opening words. I would like to thank MIS for the co-hosting this event with One Smart Star. And good morning to everybody that came to participate in this event. I would also like to thank my partner, Mr. Kerry Wee, the president of One Smart Star Asia, with the invited guest from the telecos, from the QBE members, and everybody that come to participate with us. We know that every company would like to digital their businesses, 
but without transformation, it's impossible. We understand that one cannot digital without partnership. One smart star has found a way, limited cost and very effective for digital for every businesses. I would like to show you this solution, but before I will start the actual presentation, I will show with you, share with you a short movie that describes the general business, and then we'll move on. Please. Why? Why so many words? Why so many numbers? When all you need is one smart star. One smart star, transforming customer experience. So easy to remember, so simple to use. Unifying fixed and mobile phones, email, SMS, fax, post, VIVR, and apps, the unique four-digit number simplifies customer access to your business. Whether by number or by name, One Smart Star improves brand recognition and increases advertising response. Using our new Starphone VIVR, your customers go directly to the services they require. Browsing multiple options, with Starphone they quickly find the one they need. Starphone means less zero out and fewer customer center calls. Result? More satisfied customers with greater brand loyalty, buying more of your goods and services. Proven in dozens of countries by global brands and local businesses. One smart star, easy to remember, simple to use. Use the link or QR code to download the OSSN Starphone app. Okay, a little bit about One Smart Star. The company is founded in 2005. One Smart Star is an American company. The first country to be launched was Israel. We start to give a nickname, star and four-digit number to the companies in Israel. When we saw it's very successful, we have thousands of companies using our service. We went out of Israel. Today, while I'm standing here, I'm happy to tell you that One Smart Star have a local partner in 77 countries around the globe. We have thousands, actually hundreds of thousands of companies using this star number, and we have millions of people using and pressing this number every day. One Smart Star is a patent protected worldwide. What we actually saying? We saying we narrow the gap between the corporate and its customers. Here in the middle, we took an example of our customers. We are serving uh, banks, uh, rental car companies, credit cards, hotel, you name it, all the sectors. Those companies, they would like that their customers will be easy way to reach them with all the communication methods via fax, telephone number, landline, mobile, SMS, postmail, email, website, and so on and so on. Our solution, we took an example here, HSBC Bank. We are saying there is no integrated solution. If you look on uh, HSBC Bank advertising, newspaper, Wherever you see a lot of contact information that there is no integrated solution between them. If I will ask you now how to contact HSBC Bank, you need to go to Google or to find their telephone number, to find their email, to find anything that you need. One smart star solution. We create, for example, for HSBC, we call it a nickname. Star HSBC, the meaning of your keyboard, of the mobile phone, it's star 4722. In all the countries that HSBC is our partners, is our customers, all what the people need to remember in order to contact HSBC by any communication channels is just to remember star HSBC. 
It's very simple, and it's increased the response between the customers and the company. I will show you just in the, how it looks. We're saying yesterday in the envelope, today you can use letters, you can use numbers. This is from Georgia, this is from Azerbaijan, this is from Bulgaria. We have examples of many countries. We are partner of National Post Office, of uh, TNT, DHL, UPS, all the companies that are doing uh, delivery, carrier, boxes, envelope, they know how to deliver the envelope or the boxes with the automatic sorting machine to deliver to the final destination of the company. How it looks in the reality. This is a homepage of Unicredit Bank, International Bank. You see new number, star 111, envelope. Mercedes, they choose Star Auto. I can tell you that Audi using Star Audi and Visa, you, uh, Fiat using Star Fiat and, and uh, Opel using Star Opel. Mercedes took, choose Star Auto. Star Auto for everything, for mobile phone, for envelope, for email. This is their contact. I'm showing you uh, different sectors from different countries. This was from Slovakia, this is from Chile. The health insurance provided by the government. They choose Star Vida. Vida in Spanish, it's life. After they took this Star Vida, three months later, I can tell you, more than 80% of their contact, their incoming call, came from this number, even though they have very nice 800 number. You see 800, 800, 262, because it's easier to remember Star Vida. This is from next door, from Hong Kong. Construction Bank of China. Their stock code market is 0939. So they're playing as a marketing because everybody remember Construction Bank of China, 0939. Texas companies from many countries, you see. Uh, Georgia, they think they are James Bond, so they took star 0007. So playing with that. Um, Lavazza Company, Cafe. The idea people doing a marketing, investing a lot of uh, money to do advertising in uh, TV, advertising in the radio or in the billboard. Sometimes you are driving the car, you see a billboard. You look in the billboard, you see eight digit number. Can you remember how to call the company? No, you are losing, the company are losing. So the star number is more effective advertising. So when you see star cafe, you remember how to contact Lavazza. Every country, we have one of the bank using Star Bank. Very simple. Billboard, logo of the company, Star Bank. Food delivery, I don't want to, to waste your time too much, but you can see, you name it, Pizza Hut, Domino's Pizza, Papa John, all of them using Star Number, credit card company, Visa using that, MX using that. It's very important. I can tell you, our dream, it's not final yet, but still we are missing some countries. But the idea, very soon, if you will be traveling to any country around the globe, and if you will lose your visa, all what you need to remember to dial Star Visa. And if you have the Star Phone application, later we talk about it, you can do everything with Visa. This is a fast taxi from Austria. This is from UK, uh, optometrist. So they have star eyes, but they have also took star 2020. Because 2020, it means you see perfect. So this is marketing. We have a lot of companies playing with the number as a marketing. Like where one of the biggest bank in Israel, they have a call center working 24 hours. So they took star 2407. Everybody remember that number 2407. This is the 24 hours call center of the bank. I like this advertising. This is a pro-credit bank from um, Bulgaria. They are saying the new, fastest, and more convenient way to contact us. With this number, you can reach us by phone, email, post, and see the size of the star number. Because the marketing director of the bank, he wants to tell the people, remember, star 7,000. This is our identity. 
newspaper from uh, Georgia. Don't, don't try to read this newspaper, it's complicated. They took Star 2424. This is a daily newspaper. Again, connected with a... This is from Vietnam. You see the size. Municipalities, beauty companies from Hong Kong. This company want to say that they are number one, so they took star 0001. Again. So, who is our customer? I'm very happy to, to say today, after uh, uh, 12 years already running around the globe, we cannot really find an international brand that are not our customers even in one country. At least in one country, we reach all the international companies from different sectors, from car industry, all of them, all the international bank, credit card, food delivery, rental card, airlines company, you name it. In order to have this uh, star number working in the countries, we are working very hard. We are partner of almost 200 operators, and if somebody here dealing with the operators, he knows what does it mean to sign contract with the operators. I hope uh, uh, next year we will finalize this contract with the operators here in Singapore with uh, StarHub, M1, and, and Singtel, so we provide these basic services of star number here in Singapore. But you name it, you see all of them are here. So what I showed you now, this how we start, when we start with this business, uh, 12 years ago, I mentioned 77 countries, almost 200 operators working successfully, all the uh, uh, companies very, very happy. But we start to ask our companies, because when we start the service, the star phone was not in the market. Most of the people was using landline phone and feature phone, and we were actually on top of the technology. And we are in the high-tech industry. We want to keep, continue on top of the technology. So we ask our customer, what is next? They told us, people remember the number, calling us a lot. But then, if you're calling now to a bank or insurance company, you hear, welcome to the company. For English, press one. For Chinese, press two. Hindu, you choose your language. And then, for customer support, for new member, sometimes you're waiting maybe 15 minutes on the line in order to get what you need. The problem with that, when I need a, a service for my um, cable TV or to complain about my internet, and I'm waiting 10 minutes on the line, in the end, a nice lady or guy answer me, Hello, how can I help you? I'm already feel that I don't have a time to be patient and to talk with them nicely because I was waiting. So they lose the point. They're getting a lot of calls that they cannot handle that and the situation is not so good. So we came with this is the latest technology. We develop an application of visual IVR to visual all the IVR. And I would like to show you another uh, video how to use this. Let's play a game. Remember this number, 632-775-80. Got it? Uh, even I forgot. It's impossible. How about a shorter number? Star 647. That's easy. Starphone, a short and simple dialer bringing together all communication channels. No more need to use tons of applications for tons of companies. Starphone is the shortest way between you and all what you need. Starphone can use your location to find MIS event with a schedule near you or you want to register training class at MIS Training Center. How do you get there? Just click the button and you're on your way. Yes, you can forget about. Hello, welcome to our long and boring menu. For accounting, press 1. For customer service, press 2. For operator, press 0. No more of that. Just dial and the dialer will give you all the possibilities on one simple screen. Available for iPhone, Android, Windows Phone, and in 50 languages. Download it now. Starphone, enhance your capability. Call MIS now. <laughs> So we're talking about Starphone master application. You know, recently a lot of companies start to develop their own application. But the problem, if I'm a SMEs, if I'm a medium company, even a bank and an airlines company, 
how many of my customers will download this application? Because the problem on their phone, they cannot have so many applications. The application is, is taking a memory and consuming the battery because it's working in the background. So we develop a one master application for all the companies in the market. We make it globally for the countries that you're living whenever you will travel. For example, if you will have star phone application installed in your phone, and you dial star HSBC, star 4722, it will give you a landing page. From this page, you can do whatever you need. First of all, it will open the land, the page in your own language. We support 50 different languages. If you are living here in Singapore, and you dial star HSBC, and you prefer to contact HSBC in English, you will have it in English. If you prefer in Chinese, if you prefer in Bahasa, Spanish, whatever language you will choose, you will have it. You can call directly to any department that you want. You can navigate to any branch. You can find any uh, ATM machine. All the services that HSBC would like to give to the customers, we pack it in a very nice user interface. Everything, you feel welcome when you see the page. Everything by click, to call, to send an email, to navigate. Everything, click to action. I took here a different uh, companies to show you how we're doing with the, with the this is a, a real companies, yes? One of them is Pizza Hut. If you dial star, this is Pizza Hut from Romania, you dial star 1010, you open this page. You can order, you can order all, uh, online, you can navigate to the branches, everything. But why are we saying this is uh, marketing? Why are we saying this is going to help Pizza Hut? Because today, if I will dial uh, to Pizza Hut, I will call by the phone and will talk to them and I will order. Pizza Hut pushing a lot this application because they want you as a customer, when you're calling Pizza Hut, to see this banner. They know that once you see this pizza, you see this uh, bread, you see the Coca-Cola, you will order more. This is for them a marketing to push. Another company that recently we're very happy that they will become our customers, it's a Turkish Airlines. We provide them this application now in Israel and in Turkey, and now we're working with them closely to collect all the information. They are flying to 68 countries, and they are very happy basically because of the languages. People traveling to them from China, traveling from from Saudi Arabia, they need Arabic, they need all the languages. All what you need in order to contact Turkish Airlines, booking, manage my reservation, everything, you have click to action. So now Turkish Airlines putting everywhere our application. So the benefit, if I'm living in Romania and I'm using Starphone for Turkish Airlines, I can, the same application, I can contact Pizza Hut and government offices. This is everybody winning to everybody. This is what it means, one master application. In the middle, you can see this is the police of Costa Rica. We start to provide in every country, and I hope very soon to provide here to the police in Singapore. We actually donate this application free of charge to every police around the globe because we would like to help people with this application, I can say, saving life of people. Because when you dial 911 today, the call going to the call center of the police, and I'm coming from the security side, and I will tell you how it works, okay? Today, if my neighbor is playing drums and doing noises at midnight, I will call 911. If somebody block my car, I will call 911. But if it's a young lady, 18 years old, two drunk guys after going from the bar, they take her and push her to the car, she also calling 911. I will ask you, it makes sense that all these three calls in the same time coming together to the call center, there is a big difference and we need to give a priority to this lady. So we developed this application and we are saying if you need 
to report to the police that somebody blocked your car, you can wait on the line two minutes, nothing will happen. But this lady, that two guys push her to the car, she needs to get the service right away. One minute for her, this is a, a long time. So once she will dial nine star nine, 911, she will have a panic button. While she will press this panic button, many things will happen. The speaker of the phone will open. The camera of the phone will open. The commander control of the police, they can see the location, they can hear what's going on in the car, and they can see what's going on in the car. She even doesn't need to say anything. Just to press the button, they can come and save the life. So we know that some companies create a company and raise money only for this panic button. We have it in our application, star phone application. And I will tell you, I'm now in Singapore. Sorry, I don't know what is the emergency number. I know in US it's 911, in Israel it's 100, in Japan it's 110, and it's in Europe it's 112. But we don't know. And when you are traveling as a tourist, you don't know too. So in the home page of the application, in every country, we have a button that will say police. You travel tomorrow to, to Costa Rica, you need a police, you have the button. You don't need even to know the number what to dial. This is uh, just to show you Turkish Airlines advertising. You see, they are putting here the star phone. They're saying, fly Turkish, dial star phone. This is the police in Fiji. I was there uh, three months ago when we launched the application with them. I'm happy to say today, in every police car, you see, this is a star phone logo. In every police, this is the commissioner of the police in Fiji. We launched this application, and this is the official application of the police in Fiji. You can find, you see here, rich police station. If you open here, you see all the cities. You choose a city, you see all the station. You press, and then you can navigate, you can call to the each cities. Now we're working together with the police in Ghana. They have a lot of problems with the, with the crimes there. They want to give the people the possibility to call to the first, the closest car of the police. We allow them to do that together with the star phone application. With this way, we actually ensure that you will download this application, you will tell your mother, your children, download this application because it saved your life, but in the same time, you can reach any other companies in the market. This is from Hong Kong. Uh, Faith College Company, you see? They took a star number, they teaching people how to do the phasing and everything. They're very happy they're pushing this uh, star phone application in all their advertising because they want, again, people to call them to see whatever. They have a new banner, they have a new cream, they have a new seminar. They can show the people, they can attract more customers. This is a post office in uh, Bulgaria, again, to show you people using that. This is our star phone QR code to download. Again, the police in Peru using this application, ambulance. With the ambulance now, this is, you see here, the command and control, but with the ambulance, we have a very good services because when a lady is sitting with her husband, let's say, at home, and he got a heart attack, she is calling to the, to the ambulance. And via the phone, she's in panic, and the doctor tried to guide her what to do. Now we're saying in the application, open a video call. With the video, it's helped the doctor to understand what the situation is. Also with the police, with the municipalities, we're saying, if you see any obstacle on the road, you can take a picture, send. They understand. They see a, a tree went down to the, to the street. Okay, take a picture, send. The municipality or the police, get the location, get the situation, coming to help. If you see a fire, 
you can take a video. They know exactly if they need to send one car or ten cars. Because sometimes people can say, it's a huge accident, it's a huge fire. They don't know exactly what is the situation. So we're helping to report from the people, the end user, to the police, ambulance, or government. This is just came out one week ago. And I am very happy that we get the permission to use it, to present it here to you. This is the king of Thailand. They choose star 999. You see with the star phone. This is a non-profitable organization. They're helping people to come, to see, to pray, where to pray, what to do, how to donate money. They are very happy with that. And the customers start to download a lot. Hotels in Costa Rica, Suzuki. What I want to show you with this advertising, we're selling a star number that will be easy to remember and simple to use. But with the star phone application, we can say the landing page of the company will be opened not only when you dial the star number. If the company has 10 different numbers, any number that the company wants that will open the star phone application, it will work. And when the company is calling outgoing call to the customers, Many companies, they have several outgoing numbers. We can say, if HSBC Bank calling you, you will see on your phone the logo of HSBC, and you know that it's HSBC calling me. You know that the Suzuki is calling you, and not just an unknown number. This is a McDonald's from Malaysia. This is a, another company. Bulgaria, I like to see this advertising. They put the, the logo like in a big size on the advertising. This is actually finished. I will ask my partner here from, from Malaysia, just finished uh, two days ago. And, and thank you for them doing a great job in, in Malaysia. You see here, Moto Nation, they took Star Moto, and they have this Star Phone application. They are using that. You can find all the information you need with them. Basketball, basketball team, you see in the in stadium, they're saying this is we have star 9325, download the star phone. You see everything about the basketball. So what we are talking about here, I showed you all the varieties of the companies from SMEs to the, the tier one, the police, government, institute, whatever. All of them can benefit from that. And the end, the end user can benefit because he can reach thousands of customers in the market with the one application. One thing about making that globally, I want to mention to you, we are behaving with the, with the star number like a domain. It means we are giving star Avis to Avis and star Visa to Visa everywhere. Today, if you will travel to Costa Rica, for example, and you rent a car of Avis, and you dial star Avis, and you are coming from Austria, for example, it will show you two numbers. You would like to contact Avis in Costa Rica or Avis at home, because nobody knows what you want. Whenever you travel, you see the companies in the market and back home. But one thing about uh, Avis in Costa Rica, I am very happy to say, I, I hope you will visit this country, very nice country, and you rent a car from Avis, before they will give you the key of the car, they will tell you, hey, stop a minute, download Star Phone application. People asking why. They will tell you, now you take Avis car and you travel from the city to the beach, through the jungle. Let's say you stuck with your car. I don't want to talk about accident. You stuck with your car. You, all what you need to do to dial Star Avis and to say, I'm here. They will get your location, they can come and find you. We know that uh, people that are uh, coming from the high tech, I know how to come to my phone with the navigation to take the location, to find the number to send, but we provide everything by click. For many people, this is a very challenging, and we're helping the people to report that they stuck, and we're helping the company to come and to find them and to serve them. 
This is another SMEs to show you. We talk about the comp big companies, professional tailor, dialer, regular number. We are not selling only star number, regular mobile phone. You see the page, everything about the lady, everything about the company. So I would like to summarize. I don't want to waste your time too much. Benefit of the businesses, we says we create single identity to your business, innovative marketing tool, combines all company communication into a one single number, increase customer loyalty, and everything, it's very, very important. It's a tailor made for every company. We're talking about a marketing institute, we're talking about a, a food delivery, we will do whatever company needs, and I'm very happy to say we're looking for challenge. If somebody or company will ask us for something new to develop, we will do everything. The limitation of the star phone is your imagination. Whatever needs, it's possible. We're saying yes, it's possible, we can do it. We're talking about the companies together with all the information. We provide uh, data mining. I'm not uh, going to talk about data mining. I know we'll talk about it soon here. But we can provide the company how many people were clicking on each button so they will know what to change, how to do marketing better to help them to understand because sometimes companies think that they know exactly what people need, but we give them the actual information. In the side of the end user, the benefit of the Starphone app, it's one master application. We mentioned one time you download, you save the memory on your phone. You can contact thousands of companies worldwide. No more to wait online and, and searching. One click to action and you can find your own language in any country that you will travel. About Singapore, we're saying there are 8.3 million subscribers. Master application can save the daily need, the star number with the people using this application. It's easily global, international brands and companies with the same number across the world. I, I mentioned before, if you travel and you, you lose your visa, visa, it's star visa everywhere around the globe. We mentioned it's a win-win situation from the SMEs, tier one companies, government institutes, and definitely for the end user. And one smart star, star number, it's one identity, it's easy to remember and simple to use. This is all what I want to say, and I will be happy uh, with the Recommended. Uh, Hi, so my name is Star. Let's play a game. Remember this number: zero six twenty two forty six sixty three three. Got it? Uh, even I forgot. It's impossible. How about a shorter number? Star seven two three. That's easy. Starphone, a short and simple dialer bringing together all communication channels. No more need to use tons of applications for tons of companies. Starphone is the shortest way between you and all what you need. Starphone can use your location to look for an insurance agency near you or are you looking for QBE broker? How do you get there? Just click on the button and you're on your way. It's that easy. And yes, you can forget about Hello, welcome to our long and boring menu. For accounting, press 1. For customer service, press 2. For operator, press 0. No more of that. Just dial and the dialer will give you all the possibilities on one simple screen. Available for iPhone, Android, Windows Phone and in 50 languages. Download it now. Starphone, enhance your capabilities. Call QBE now. Thank you very much. I just want to mention that QBE become our strategic partner. And thank you very much. Download this application and you enjoy it. Thank you, Mr. Susan, for showing us how to connect better through one smart star technology. Our next speaker is a lawyer by training. He reaches us and teaches in media law and policy. He is also the author of Ordering Cures, Regulating the Internet. Recently, he co-edited 
a three volume encyclopedia on digital communications and society. In Singapore, he is the legal advisor of the Advertising Standards Authority of Singapore and had served as the founding president of the Internet Society Singapore chapter. He is also currently the professor at the Wee Kim Wee School of Communication and Information in NTU Singapore and the immediate past president of the International Communication Association, where he is the first Asian elected. Let's put our hands together and invite Professor An Penghua for his presentation. Thank you and good morning. Uh, I was somewhat conflicted in my attire because usually for such meetings I wear a tie, but then the digital, you see. Right, people digital are supposed to be a little cooler. So I was like, okay, you know, tie or no tie, you know, so I'm kind of torn here. You see the rest of the speakers here overlap ties. Um, I, yeah, I want to thank uh, David for the presentation. It's kind of interesting. I think you all agree. Um, and I will note also that you're from Israel, right? And I, when I first, when he spoke a little bit, I thought he was from Mexico. And, and, and you all know why, right? Because in, in Singapore, when our first soldiers went to, uh, went to the army, uh, because of our neighbours, right, the sensitivities there, they, they said that they were from Mexico. That these people training us are from Mexico. And the people are like, how oh, come Mexico? Why are Mexico killing us in Singapore? Like, how come, you know? Um, and you should know also that where I work, and those of you who work in the West, you should know that we favour Jews. You know that, right? That's why we call Jew Rome. Because, no, seriously, seriously, okay? The area was owned by a Jew man, and so he was called Jew Orang, which contracted became Jurong. So now you know the history about Singapore, how important, you know, uh, uh, it's really, right, exactly right, right. And also our ch first chief minister, you know, was a Jew, right, David Marshall. So we, you know, hey, we really love uh, the, the Jews here, right? Okay. All right, so let me, let me begin now. Okay, this is the issue of building trust. We, we trust him. We trust him. Okay. We don't trust technology sometimes, but okay. Okay, so this is my talk, and um, yeah, I think the issue here that we have faced nowadays is that of building trust. Um, and it's interesting that Roger talked about China, because I was happened to be there for a week, uh, just last week in Shanghai, and I was astonished how much they used uh, the technology. Even the canteen, so I could, the student had to, had to buy me dinner. You know, really paisa, you know? Embarrassing, right? Because the student is buying you dinner, like your professor and the student buying you dinner, you know? Uh, but I couldn't pay in cash, they, they didn't take cash. Right? I, I, I had money, I, I know quite a bit of money, right? No, sorry, you know, not useful, right? Okay, so the issue of trust is this, right? So in the digital marketing space, right, anybody can be a digital marketer, right? You all know that, right? So, okay, right. So, any, like, because there is no certification. I'm a journalist by training, and one of the issues is that for journalism, at any one time, some people can write better than any trained professional journalist. Okay, I have done it before as a student in, in, in law school also. I had I wrote an article for uh, Sunday Times, and my page got really big play. So one time, I mean like almost a full page, which is kind of unusual, right, as a, as a student. But on any one time, some of your people can do a much, much better job than you. The difference is this. As a professional, you can do it consistently. I cook complicated dishes, only complicated dishes, at least 12 hours, 12 hours to prepare. Okay? The difference is that I cannot do it consistently. One, one day is like very good, next day like, why like that? No? But what does go to the canteen can, or, can you know? Right, outside the hawker center, right? The difference is that as a professional, you do it consistently. But on any one time, anybody can be better than us one time. So this is a problem of, of sort of a results, you know, looking at results, right? Um, and uh, this is our, I, I did a search on you know, social media influencers, and this one came out. Now. It's kind of interesting how we see, you know, Google says, okay, these are your digital marketers, right? It's an issue here. Okay. So how do, you, how do you, yeah, if you don't know who they are, okay, they have nice long hair, they use some shampoo ads, right? Right? Uh, what, what else can they do? Like, what, you know, how do we know them? How do we trust them, right? Okay, so this is an issue with us. So my diagnosis is this. Sorry, I'm, I know theory, right? Practice, I don't know. Okay, how do? You know? So my cooking, I follow the recipe down. Uh, my vegetable, 195 grams, 195 grams. 196, uh, you still saute the dish. Uh, it's 45 seconds, you know? I've got 45 seconds. Okay, ready, ready, 45 seconds. Okay, quick, take it out. Done. 45 seconds. Recipe books that don't work, off, uh, I you know, throw away. All that have worked, you know, I, I will follow, right? So my diagnosis, right, of this situation is asymmetric information. I'll tell you what it is, huh? This idea came from this man called George Ekeloff. As you can see, he's a very serious person. 
because he has got a Wikipedia page. We know that anybody who has got a Wikipedia page is serious. We know that. So David, if you don't have yet, you've got, be, you've got to be on Wikipedia. I mean, then we know that you're for real, right? Before that, like, who is this, you know, one smart phone or whatever, right? Okay. George Akerlof uh, was a Nobel Prize winning economist. I'm happy to announce I discovered him before he became big time. I, oh, this guy's theory is useful for, for me. Um, I discovered him in like 2000, and then they, like a few months later, he won the Nobel Prize for economics. He's a, a very powerful man also because he's married to Janet Yellen, the chair of the Federal uh, Reserve Bank in, in the US. So, you know, talk about power couple. Okay, this is a power couple. So, um, his theory is this, uh, and in fact, he won the Nobel Prize for this theory, which, by the way, is not intuitive. It's not common sense. Uh, Okay, um, and his, his paper is probably the most rejected paper for a Nobel Prize winning economist. Right? Meaning people say, ah, this is rubbish. You know, uh, in, in, academic work, in academic world, we send our papers into uh, unknown reviewers, and they can sometimes reject, right? So his um, uh, theory, not intuitive, is this, that if you only have information, right, um, as the as a way to judge a product, and this information is inc incomplete, or in its term, use asymmetric. Right? I'll tell you what it is in a bit. Then bad information will lead to the downfall of the market. Okay, and actually the term is actually the market is actually destroyed. Market destroyed. So this is a theory. So let me show you how it actually worked in Singapore. Okay. So here here is what it did. I think used cars, right? Now we all know used cars has a very bad reputation. I'm uh, one of the vice presidents of the case, and I'll tell you that used cars, by the way, has the biggest number of complaints, huh? because by value. So if, you have, if you're buying a used car, please use something called case trust. It's not a commercial message because, <laughs> because if you come and see us, we collect some money from you. <laughs> so it's not a commercial. In fact, we, so if you don't uh, come and see us, we don't collect money from you, right? So I will tell you to use case trust because you get a uh, better result. I tell, and again, I'll tell you all, all this in a bit. Okay, so you know this, right? For advertising, which is what we all do, right, in this space, right? Some information is known to both buyer and seller, and some information is not, right? Okay, so information is um, it's not only to the seller, which means it's like an advertisement, right? Because as a, as a buyer, you don't know the condition of the car, right? As a buyer, okay, David, I mean, we love you, but we don't know the product yet, right? It's asymmetrical, David. You know, I'm sorry, you know, you know we love you, but you know, it's asymmetrical. Okay, so now, here's what uh, he did for his, uh, the theory. Uh, I'll put this Bugatti Chiron. Not my dream car. Uh, my dream car is the Aston Martin DB, DB11. Uh, I know, I know. Because James Bond drove it, you see, so I asked uncle to so drive it. I'm an uncle, but I also want to drive the car, right? Bugatti Chiron is the most expensive car in the world, about two point something million dollars. I don't know what they do inside, okay? Gold taps or whatever, like, you know, whatever. But, okay, so he says that suppose you have a bad uh, a car, okay, you want to sell it, right? Owners of bad cars want to sell, right? But if you have a good car, right, you want to sell it at the same price as the bad car, right? Because you think, hey, my car is better. Why should I sell at the same price, right? Okay? So what happens is that in the long run, you would hold back your car, right? If you have a good car, you will not want to sell it. But the bad guy says, hey, I want to sell the car, you know? Right? And so this there's this pressure on the price of the car, right? Um, and in the long run, what happens is that the good cars will disappear from the market because good car says, I don't want to rent at this price, you know? Okay? I, I, I have a different model of, of, of accommodation. Where I live, I rent. I own a small condo in that, near downtown, um, so I get a you know, good rental. And then they live a further away, so that the rental has in the past normally covered, but now the market is kind of bad for rental, so um, the market has gone down and so it doesn't quite, quite cover. But I'm still, you know, preferring to rent, so I've been uh, using the rental model. I've seen houses that stay empty for months, okay, where I live uh, empty for months, because the owner refuses to rent. It's too low a price, doesn't want to rent, right? So what happens is that those of, uh, you know, where I, so where I rent, rent is like uh, older houses, Okay, some people are like, this tiles are 1980, right? Yeah, how do you know 1980? I laid the tiles, my, my friends say, oh, I laid those tiles, or I bought those tiles, or whatever. So, um, if you have a bad product, then the, 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 the price will go down, and if you have a good product, you won't want to sell them. So, the result is that this good product will disappear from the market. Okay, and eventually, only lemons will be supplied. Only lemons, huh? Okay. And so, this market is destroyed. Classic case of where this happened huh, is Simlim Square. Okay, David, Simlim Square, the lab, the, some, of the, some of the operators on the first and second floor, be very careful, we love you, so be very careful. Third and fourth floor, and Singaporeans, we know, okay, go ahead, go ahead, we'll take out, uh, there, take the lift up, take the lift up, don't go on the second, first, second floor, right, don't. Okay, it's cleaned up a lot, okay, but um, when the incident happened, right, with the Vietnamese uh, uh, guy, 
the amount of business in that shopping mall dropped by 30%. Whole business. So if you are a landlord in a place, right, you actually should cut your rent by 30% because the whole business fell by 30%. Right? That's how bad it was. Right? So this is the case of the market was not destroyed, dented, but in some cases, the market can be destroyed. You can see how this works. So let me give you some examples, right? Okay, right? So if the social media blew our heart, right? Because social media, we didn't know, is one asymmetrical, right? We don't know the product, right? We don't know the service, right? The prediction says the market will drop to zero. Prediction. It's a question. Did that happen or not? Right? So you know what? You know the headline, right? Okay, Singtel said sorry. The CEO said sorry. Please. Okay. At the level, huh? they are the lovers, okay? They never ever say they're sorry, okay? So people don't say they're sorry, right? So to say sorry is a really big deal. And you can see Charles Okung, okay? Just to tell you my age and how big time these people are, right? I, she was my schoolmate in school, huh? so yeah, I know. Okay, uh, but yeah, I know big time, so I have some friends I can rub shoulders with, right? Okay. Uh, we regret that, okay, this employee did not adhere, terminated the services, basically sacked, right? And agency also basically was sacked as well. Okay. But you, I don't know if you know the whole, the, the, some of you will probably know this, right? Behind the scenes, right? Add budgets, eh? drop to zero. Eh? Market destroyed. Really, at least, okay, temporarily. It wasn't, it wasn't our surprise. Like, we all thought like, maybe freeze or whatever, so slow down, but it's actually dropped to zero. In other words, people didn't spend. Okay, because, you see, what happens if you spend, then people think, oh, yo, you know, this cannot be trusted, you know? Which is why, again, not many of you will know this, right? In a war, in a war setting, right? A lot of people watch uh, TV, listen to radio, buy newspapers, but advertising, do not, they do not jump in. Because you don't be associated with this kind of, you know, bad situation, right? What was a bad situation? You know, the bodies, the people dead, you know, bombed, all that, so you don't want to associate it, right? So, um, this was born out. Now. I was, myself, was surprised because I expected something like to happen. It's kind of waiting, you know, we send guidelines. And then it dropped to, actually, to zero. I was really surprised. I was told this by some people in this marketing space. So the lessons, right, is that asymmetric information, one-sided and therefore unreliable, can cause markets to fail. Okay? So you need credible information, right? So now what do you do? And this is where, I think this is where all of you are uh, concerned what to do, right? So um, Josh Eikoloff had a solution, right? So he says signaling and screening. So in a way, all of you here are signaling, right? that you are serious about this space. You know, what do you want to do to make your marketing more credible? How do you make sure that your marketing is not that extreme, uh, incredible, right? right? You want it to be believable uh, to reach your, your, your marketers. So one of the ways that he suggested was self-regulation. Okay? And uh, you will know why self-regulation, because the alternative to self-regulation is government regulation, which I think in the marketing space cannot work because you stifle uh, your creativity. So the problem is now the question is, has it worked in Singapore or not, right? Okay, so this is the theory right now. Can you work or not in Singapore? We are so different, right? Okay. So this is an example that I gave. And when I show this to um, audiences, especially American audiences, you can see the jaw like falls to the floor, right? <clears throat> so let me tell you how to read the numbers. This is used car dealers self-regulation in Singapore. When you hear this, Americans like, I cannot believe self-regulation will work. You know, cannot work you know, anywhere, but Singapore, how does it work, right? Okay. So this is under case trust, and that's why I tell you, if you're buying a used car, please use the case trust self-regulatory model for cars. Okay. It, it, it works. Okay. So this is the number, number of complaints in 12 months, right, before, right, 149, 150, right? This group, people who join self-regulatory, not everybody joins, by the way, not everybody joins. Because you must pay some money, you've got to set up a scheme, you've got to appoint people and all that. So there's some real cost involved. Four complaints. Because it's, it's only 20% who join, right? It must times five. Okay, so five and four, 20. Six months, make it 12, 12, 12 months, right? So 40. So proportionately, to keep this ratio the same, 40 complaints in 12 months versus 149 complaints. The difference is this, right? You know, you guys will know. Complaints is not just quant uh, quantity. It's also quality of complaints. These complaints were easily resolved. Easily meaning within a month, okay, problem solved. Right? You don't have people running away from deposits. No defective uh, cars, right? Easily resolved. So you can see the, the ratio here, the difference, right? And I will tell you that <coughs> in case many people, my, 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 my co uh, committee members, right, their committee members were very nervous because, like, hey, used cars, huh? can we trust the dealers or not? Right? Because everywhere, like, used car dealers, you know, like, low reputation, right? Sorry, if you have any used car dealers here, don't, don't, don't take it personally. It's the industry, not you. We love you, but it's not, it's not, your, it's not you, right? 
Um, but the theory says it can work. Okay, so the theory comes in, and it, in fact, it's shown to, to work. So actually, it is happening. The difference, the result, unfortunately, is that because the, this is working, some people are actually backing out. They're actually backing out. And but as a whole, the number of complaints has actually fallen. Right? And those people who because they don't pay the money, they say that um, we don't pay the money, but we follow the guidelines. And so industry as a whole has, has improved, has cleaned up the act. Okay, now online world, okay, you can see this happening in Facebook, um, trying to improve the trusted space. I wrote an op-ed some months back talking about how in this space advertising will clean up the act. And so Facebook you can see is trying to clean up the act. Google also, I won't have I don't have time, so I didn't drop uh, Google the YouTube because there are some problems if Google, if Google YouTube look for look for YouTube and um, complaints. There was an investigation showing that ads linked to ads appearing linked to extremist sites. And so Google had to clean up that bit as well. So I think in this space, things will improve. So in fact, on a fake news front, I think this will, the situation will improve. Right? The point, though, is this, that these are experts in the marketing space. They're trying to clean up the act. And so I think you all, as managers here, have to be very conscious that without this kind of cleaning up, you will have issues on the road. Your ads will not be trusted. Your marketing will not be trusted. In the long run, as a whole, the industry can lead to a, can lead to a, a downfall and a collapse. Okay? Uh, Small plug here, okay. My last slide. <clears throat> so in building trust in Singapore, what we try to do in the digital space is to have some guidelines for social media marketing. Okay, these are based on the example that we had two years now, 2015, uh, the Singtel gush crowd incident. Uh, actually, we had it ready for in fact, about two years before that. No? But people don't, were not motivated. They couldn't see the, you know, the, the, the result. No? But because of the incident, people became aware that if you don't have these kind of guidelines, it's going to lead to destruction of the market. So we have some guidelines. These are self-regulatory. Um, you can, they are available online. You can Google them. They are available online. The important thing is that it builds trust in the system. And I think in the long run, that leads to a healthier marketing uh, in, uh, situation and therefore a healthier marketing industry. Okay, on that note, thank you. Thank you, Prof. Ang, for his lesson on building trust. Our next speaker, the one and only one lady speaker in Asia since 1991 is an expert business and marketing specialist with more than 25 years of agency, technology and consulting experience. She is an active advocate of the data-driven marketing industry and has served as chairperson of DMAS since 2012. She represents the direct and data-driven marketing industries on several Singapore government councils, including the Advertising Standards Authority of Singapore and NTUC U Associates Program. She's none other than Miss Lisa Watson. May we welcome her on stage, please. Right. Sorry, I'm just getting my toys out. Are we good on the microphone? So actually, I, I'm somebody who doesn't really need too much of a microphone. In the office, I'm known as the woman with no secrets, as I have such a terribly loud voice. So I'm so excited to be here today. If you want to uh, switch over to my slides, that would be great. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about changing the, uh, the customer experience and taking a look at new ways that companies are using data to change the way they interact with their, their customers. And I suppose <clears throat> everyone knows who this little guy is here. Right, so I uh, actually I always put Pokemon in the title because that means everybody wants to attend my talk. <laughs> um, even when they're very young, so that's actually kind of a, a fun thing. So you know we're in this crazy world today. Our world is changing very fast. And in fact, it's changing faster than we can even keep pace with some time. I found this graph, which I think is quite interesting. This was in Fortune magazine. And it basically shows the speed of innovation. It's an innovation curve. Interestingly for me, I think you might be aware, my day job is I work for HP. And it was interesting to me that um, the founding moment of the innovation curve was the invention of the printing press, which this is the invention in Germany of the printing press, not the invention in China, which was in 1377, but uh, nevertheless. Um, between when we had the printing press and when we finally had electricity to keep lights on in the shop took 400 years, which was really quite amazing for people in the printing industry. They can't imagine that everyone 
printed only during daylight hours for so many years. Uh, the telescope, Newton invented his telescope in 1668, and 300 years later, we actually had men walking on the moon. If you can imagine, it was 1998, only 1998, when we first saw Google on the scene. Right, and they haven't changed that much. It's pretty amazing. I mean, they fixed the logo a little bit, modernized it some, but actually the Google experience is very much the way it was. Uh, it's almost hard to say 20 years ago. Right, next year will be 20 years. And by 2015, we've actually advanced from being able to search the internet to actually having the internet of things. Anyone heard of a dash button? Anybody know what a dash button is? Amazon has actually created a very interesting concept. They have something, in this case, obviously, Tide laundry detergent. So they have a dash button that you put next to the washing machine. And what you do is when you get low on, on laundry detergent, you press this button. And it triggers the, um, a box or a, a portion, a, a carton or something of Tide, at least one bottle, to be put into your Amazon shopping cart automatically. Right? And I will say they do then send you a text message to make sure you really want this. right? And then in some places where they have same day delivery, you can have the laundry detergent replenished before the end of the day. So laundry detergent for me is a bit of a low interest category. So to me, that isn't the highlight. I, today they have over 280 of these buttons. By the way, the manufacturers actually pay for them to begin with. And they have them in various catalog categories. So household and office, kids, baby, and pets. I mean, babies especially, right? Nappies and formula, right? Any of those products, very convenient for mom to be able to just order more. Beverage and grocery. For me, the highlight was when I discovered Haagen-Dazs. Haagen-Dazs has a dash button. And I know very much why they have the text message going to make sure you really ordered it. Because you can only imagine having all the treats at home with little dash buttons and how many things would end up in your shopping cart if you didn't really monitor that a bit. But beauty and apparel, um, and of course, music, sports, outdoors, etc. So this is a very interesting and exploding area, area. What Amazon is counting on every time you press that dash button, of course, not only are they getting the commercial transaction, but they're also getting data. Right, so our world is exploding into this, uh, into a world and a marketing world that is based on data, and the um, chairman, is, uh, as you just heard, of the of DMAS, which used to be the Direct Marketing Association of Singapore, is now the Data Driven Marketing of, uh, Association of Singapore. And we're really seeing the marketing decisions that are being made today becoming more and more data driven. Now, it's interesting, you know, we hear this term big data all the time, and I think it's kind of an there's a timeline, believe it or not, 73 years ago is the first time the word, word big data actually came on the scenes. And in 1944, big data meant something completely different. You know what the worry was in 1944? Where are we going to store all the books? I'm serious, right? There was no conception of an internet. So it was, they were worried about having over 200 million volumes in the uh, Library of Congress, and where were they actually going to put those physical books? We actually um, had a transformation in 1996, which is, of course, 22 years ago, almost, um, when data storage, digital storage, became cheaper than physical storage. So I think many of you might remember days when actually storage was so expensive, we were actually held back in the amount of data we could keep. But today, we actually assume. How many of us have more than a terabyte of data available in cloud services? Anybody have the Dropbox of more than a terabyte, OneDrive more than a terabyte, Google more than a terabyte? I've got so many terabytes of data, you know, who knows? I have to, um, I have to go through and sort it out as much as I need to sort out my paper storage. But today, actually, 1997 was the first time the actual phrase big data was used in the sense that we, we use it today. So data and transactions, things are happening at an amazing rate. This is quite funny. I think this is what happens in an internet minute in 2016. I can hardly wait to see how it's changed for 2017. But I think there are a few things we see. So number one, 20.8 million WhatsApp messages. Right? How many of those 
I think like one million of them came to me um, almost every minute, it seems like, just while I was sitting here, I'm, the world's going crazy. 150 million emails were sent every minute. Amazon, $203,000 per minute in transactions. They're doing pretty well, I'd say. Actually, I'd like to compare them to some of the other, especially the platforms in China, if we would ever get that data available. Facebook had 701,000 logins every minute, and I find it extremely interesting that Tinder swipes were a little bit more popular than <laughs> Facebook logins. So right, left, right, left, right, where uh, a lot happens every minute online. Thanks primarily to the fact that we carry the internet with us. Right? Who uses their phone for phone calls? How many phone calls do you make or receive in a day? In fact, I'm annoyed these days when I get a phone call. Right? I don't mind having a Skype session with my family back at home or whatever, but you know, when somebody calls me up, it's like, why are you bothering me? Just send me a message. In fact, we have more mobile phones today than we have people. And remember, there was a time we stood in a queue and had to have the right change in order to make a phone call. And many of you I can see out there wouldn't even imagine that those days would be possible. Today, of course, we, we carry the capability not just of, of making phone calls, but we have more power in our mobile phone than it took to send the man to the moon in 1969. So the phones have changed everything about the way we interact with our friends. It's changed completely how we interact with our families. <laughs> it's interesting as well. I found some data. This is from a Deloitte study. And it says that 83% of people in the uh, emerging markets, 62% of people in developed markets, go on their phone within 30 minutes of waking up. Anybody sleep with the phone next to the bed? Right. Anybody still use an alarm clock? Actually, that's the more important question. Or do we just use our phone, right? The number of times I fall asleep with my phone in bed with me, right? It's, uh, it's really hilarious. I, I rarely make it 30 minutes from when I wake up to when I've actually checked my phone the first time. They also share some data about what we do when we're on the phone. And it's interesting that somewhere around th uh, two thirds of people actually communicate to the outside world as the first thing they do with their phone. They send text messages, they send emails, they go on social media. I have learned, however, that if you live in a city with a lot of traffic, not a lot of traffic like we say here in Singapore, because we don't actually know traffic, right? But if you're in Bangkok or Jakarta, Manila, um, they all go on their phone immediately to see what the traffic is like and the weather. Because if it's not too bad, they can sleep longer. Right? That's the whole thing, right? So then after that, if they know they have to get up, then they go and check on social media. So we even, this has led to some interesting social things, right? So we have this kind of amazing thing. I found an article on the business etiquette of using emoji in your emails. So I must say, I'm a big fan of just putting the little smiley in an email when I've actually done something, said something kind of terrible, but I, I don't want them to feel too bad as a result. I always put a little smiley or a winky or something there. And I found actually Twitter published some data about the most popular emojis that, that are used in different countries. And again, I think it, there's some interesting results here. Philippines and Indonesia, we see a lot of, I actually I must say I don't really use this one, but we see a lot of that gritting their teeth. Um, when I have teams in from Philippines and Indonesia, they all resonate with that. Italy, Japan, Korea, France, uh, they're in love. Then we have kind of a terrible thing happening here. Um, I think we're just about one year ago, right? You know, there was this thing called an election in the US, and I don't really want to talk about my politics too much, but I think this might be part of the result. Canada's also upset about it, you can see. They were much happier before. Um, the UK, of course, that would be Brexit, so they're also struggling quite a bit. We have music, right? Brazil, Argentina, Colombia, and we get to India, Mexico, right? We're, we're all at peace. So very interesting characteristics characteristics. I'm really sorry we didn't have Singapore on the list. I want to mention something a bit. I, I, I had Pikachu there, right, about Pokemon Go. I think uh, Pokemon's a little bit not so much Pokemon Go anymore. I think we might have moved on. For me, the most interesting thing that's happening online or has just happened online about two weeks ago, uh, three weeks ago, was this, right? The incredible phenomenon of Singles Day or 11-11. 
Right, so this is the Global Shopping Festival of 2017. The Global Shopping Festival of 2017. So in the 1990s is when the idea of Singles Day was first came out in China, right? It was called Anti-Valentine's Day. But in 2009, Alibaba got interested in it, and they w decided to try to turn it into an amazing extravaganza of shopping. So this is pretty much what uh, most companies look like on 11-11, on right? It is a bargain basement. We had some 11-11 singles day bargains here in Singapore as well. Um, I even took advantage of one from HP, my own company. How's that? Um, but this year was absolutely extraordinary, right? So the singles day actually smashed this record 20, in 24 hours, 24 hours, $25 billion of transactions were done. This is just staggering. This makes that one day, that one promotional day, stand high in the rankings of the, uh, if it were a country, it would be something like number 11 in the world for e-commerce. It's really, really a staggering day. By the way, the way they do this is it starts four hours before. There's a big TV extravaganza. Actually, that's what that stage was. All right, so there are major stars come. In 2016, they had David Beckham came. Nicole Kidman came. Right? So they have a huge countdown. They get everybody excited about it, and they go, three, two, one, now you can shop. Amazing, amazing. Um, this is um, also quite interesting. This is a comparison of Singles Day versus the US shopping holiday of Black Friday, which was just last week which is the Friday after Thanksgiving, together with what they call Cyber Monday, which is the following Monday. Right, so um, this is what's interesting to me. In 2011, you can see that Black Friday and Cyber Monday were actually ahead almost three times the sales of the, were the transaction value in Alibaba, in, uh, sorry, in uh, Singles Day. And look what's happened. Right, so 2012, actually, they were the same, and today, Actually, I should uh, get an updated version of this, but as of last year, you can see that uh, Singles Day was um, almost three times the size of, of uh, what had been always considered the, the biggest shopping day on the planet. So I think really watch that space. I mean, I can say this as you probably have gathered from my, my accent. I'm from the US. I'm one of those Americans that you just heard about from Pengma. <laughs> but, um, it's, uh, you know, there's a lot to be learned. I think the, the world should start looking at some of what's going on in China in terms of commercial success. And I think another interesting thing is in the data that came out, 90%, this is the percentage of transactions that have been done on the mobile phone as of just three weeks ago. Right, number one by 90% was the transactions were done on, on a mobile phone. So really, and again, very much part of the reason is the payment platform is, is all on, on mobile. So today we're experiencing thing that's this thing called the power of zero, right? Alibaba is the world's largest retailer, and they have no inventory. Um, they, we have Facebook. I love this I concept of Facebook. Imagine somebody said, we're going to create a new media brand, and it's going to be empty. Imagine you set up a TV channel, and it's empty. And you just say, OK, people, you can put some your own programs on there. Who would have ever thought that would be successful? Or you publish a newspaper, and you just send out blank paper until people actually send, write articles and put it on there. But that's fundamentally what Facebook has done. They've created an empty shell. And we, how many of us are on Facebook? How many of us have posted something on Facebook already once today? Oh, oh a couple brave souls are willing to admit it. Right? We actually go and we make that a compelling platform. It's generating incredible advertising revenue. Right? Um, we have Airbnb, Uber, Netflix. All of these companies are not in the traditional business model. They're all in the business of data. Right? What Facebook wants is the data about us. They want to be able to profile us. They want to be able to target advertising to us. They're in the business of data. What Airbnb wants is they want to know about our preferences. They want to know where we travel. They want to be able to target advertising to us based on data. And it's important to realize that once data becomes important, that we, we're, we become aware that we also experience what we call the power of one. And the power of one is the power of the single consumer in today's world. So it used to be, I mean, the uh, 
as marketers, we could tell consumers when to buy and what to buy. Well, today's world, of course, that's all quite different. And the millennial generation, and I, somebody just said to me they're really tired of hearing about millennials, so I might have to change this a little bit, because maybe we are getting a little tired of it. But you know, it is this, the me generation. It's really about wanting the world on um, their own terms. Millennials are lazy, entitled narcissists who still live with their parents, but why they'll save us all. <laughs> Right, it is where the world is going. It's something we need to adapt to. And there's a, a, a quite famous little acronym, I-W-W-I-W-W-I-W-I. -I -I -I. Probably you don't know what that means, but you will as soon as I show you. I want what I want when I want it. And when do I want it? No. Now, absolutely. All right, so we need to be able to change the type of experiences that millennials are having with us. And you know, they're not saying, leave me alone. They're saying, show me advertising. Tell me what's going on in the world, but do it in a way that's relevant to me. So as marketers, we have to change the way we think. We can no longer think in volume terms. We have to think in terms of value. And we want, of course, everybody's heard about this, but it's more important than ever before to find the right customer and match them with the right product at the right time, at the right price, through the right channel and to communicate them with them in a way that makes sense to them and is relevant to them. And of course, we need data to do this. So for me, data isn't just important, it's actually oxygen. Pure oxygen will kill us, right? We can't live only in the world of data. We have to have the right data. We have to be responsible about the way we use data. And when we use data in the right way, it allows us to reach and target the right customers. It allows us to personalize and customize the experiences they have with us. And it also allows us to track and be accountable for our end results. So I want to share a couple of examples now of the way a few brands have been engaging customers and consumers in, in quite new ways. I, I want to start with one of my favorites. So everybody knows Coca-Cola, of course. I won't ask if anybody doesn't know Coca-Cola. But I think everybody knows Coca-Cola. And I, I see that regular, that's a regular bottle of Coke, and that, I call that the Coke for everyone. But there's also a Coke for me. And as soon as, in, in their campaign, the uh, Share a Coke campaign, right, they turn that bottle of Coke from a Coke into my Coke. Now imagine. If I'm in a shop and there's one bottle left of Coke with a Lisa on the label, a lot of other names on there, a lot of other products, but there's only one that says Lisa. If somebody else buys that who's right in front of me, you know, I'm probably going to say, excuse me, is your name Lisa? I mean, is, or is that your wife's name or whatever, right? And, and I might even say, you know, would you mind? Because that's kind of my Coke. <laughs> And I, my name's Lisa, and here's my card, I'll prove it, right? So I, I'm not stealing it, I just would really like to have it because I think it belongs to me. A very interesting emotional link, right, with a bottle. Um, and it, it launched and, and was part of a very successful campaign for Coke, right? They spent more on the bottles that have names on the labels. The packaging itself cost more. But the impact was really quite tremendous. So they pilot tested this, interestingly, in Australia in 2011. Um, Share a Coke itself as a campaign is bigger than that, but uh, the idea of the names on the bottles started in, in Australia in 2011. They had consumption grew 7%. That, that's a lot for a big brand like Coke, uh, such a mature brand. Right? In the US, it reversed a 10-year decline in sales. So they, they rolled it out to more than 80 countries worldwide. And you know, in Singapore, we had a version of it. It wasn't, we didn't really get the names on bottles. Um, we have actually too much of an ethnically diverse mix here. I think based on our population, they just knew they would need 1,000 first names. And that might be unaffordable to do. But so we had things like, well, actually, somebody brought in a, a case. And they said, OK, the new Coke is here. So let's. Lisa, you take a Coke out. And I take one out, and you know what it said? Auntie. And, I w and my colleagues started to make fun of me, and I pulled out another one, and it said uncle. So I said, this is yours. 
But you know, we had things like BFF and I love you and I miss you and shook and, and right? So we had phrases, but we still use them, right? It's still effective campaign, but not as powerful as actually using names. And the first thing that happened when people found names on bottles is they started to share on, on social media. So this is Paul Smith, even he went on Instagram and, and uh, was so excited that he found a bottle with his name on it. Um, this is a, uh, some interesting uses of, of the bottle. So this is one, all right, so this was in the UK and they did names and phrases. So beautiful Eloise, will you marry me? So some young gentleman decided to propose to his uh, fiance. Is this a man's fridge, by the way? <laughs> Don't want to make too big a deal of that, but uh, certainly doesn't look like any fridge I've ever had. Um, Christmas time came, right? So this is how, how uh, Coca-Cola decided to celebrate Christmas with some advertising. But here's how consumers celebrated it. All right, this is really cute. This is a Spanish-speaking market. And we have Jesus, right? We have Angeles, the angels here. We have Maria and Jose. Papa Noel off to the side, right? They're very creative in what they do. Very popular combo. I'll tell you, the number of, of images you can find of Elsa and Anna, right? Yeah, exactly, very popular. Um, people even started to make jokes, which, uh, sorry, it's so low res, I looked for a better copy of it and couldn't find one, but anyway, I think that's pretty funny. And then finally, after all my searching, I finally found my own Coke. It took me a long time. It's even on a red carpet, though, so I figured it must be pretty special. Um, just to share something that Coke did in, in Korea, which is quite interesting. So 2016, 2015, sorry, was the anniversary of the bottle shape. So Coke was actually around somewhere since the 1800s, 1870-something. But um, the shape of the bottle was 100 years old. So they decided to commemorate that with a campaign. So you can see that they, they sent out five bottles to each of 1,500 opinion leaders, 500 celebrities. And every one of the bottles they sent them actually had a photo of that celebrity or opinion leader on it, right? So they chose people where they could get photos online. And they had, a, as the end result, was a six times increase in sales during the promotional period. Because everybody, of course, went on. All these opinion leaders and celebrities wrote about how amazing this was. And just so you know, I wasn't left out. <laughs> now, this is, this is cheating, because we did a special printing run of these. So by the way, all these opinion leaders are my colleagues. They're not actually. <laughs> so those are the ones I was able to take photos of. But you know, somebody actually stole, I thought they stole my bottle. I was really quite flattered by that. And then somebody said, oh no, they probably just broke it. You know, like, oh well, thanks so much. So. Um, one thing then, you know, is to take the, this concept of taking a product and turning it from a product into my product. I want to share now an example of a company that's taking a book and turning it into my book. And this is a, a company. Um, it was originally called Lost My Name. They had one book, which is the one I'll share with you today, called Lost My Name. But they've rebranded, and don't ask me why, but their new name is Wonderbly. Dot, and so you can find them online. The only way to buy these books is to go online. So here's what you do. So you go and you fill in the first name. By the way, not, I'm not advertising them, but it is a fixed price. I believe it's 40, mm, I was gonna say 43.99 or something like that in Singapore dollars. They, you can pay in Singapore dollars, but it's a fixed price and shipping is free. So no matter, you'll see, no matter how long the book is, you know, the same price. So you put in the name and decide if, if it's going to be for a boy or a girl. And you, you click Create Your Book, and you have a chance to see the book um, as an e-book first. So I want to share how this works. So this is the, you can see the little girl who lost her name and the little boy who lost her name. So one of my colleagues ordered me this book, right? So the little girl who lost her name. And it's a story about a little girl. She wakes up in the morning. and on her, her wardrobe, where her name usually is, it's missing, it's blank. So she's very upset. And she decides she has to find a name. She can't have no name. So she goes out on an adventure. And the first thing that happens to her is she meets a lion. And she's a bit scared of the lion at first. And then she says, she starts to cry. And the lion says, what's wrong, little girl? And she says, I lost my name. I don't have a name. I have to find a name. He says, well, just calm down. Don't worry, little girl. You can have the L from my name. I'm a lion. You can have L. 
She goes on a little bit farther, and now she meets an imp. And the imp is being quite naughty, and so this is fun. She plays around for a bit, and then she says, wait, I'm actually quite sad. And the, and the imp says, don't worry. You know, you can have an I for my name. She goes on a little bit farther, and now she finds a squid, and the squid is all tangled up. She helps the squid, and the squid says, thank you so much. You know, you can have an S for my name. And finally, probably no surprise, she meets an aardvark. And the aardvark says, oh, what's wrong, little girl? And she says, I, I lost my name. He says, don't worry, there are two A's at the beginning of my name. You can have one. So now she goes home. She's very happy. She goes back to bed, and she look, gets in her bed, and she looks up at the wardrobe, and there is her name, Lisa. All right? Very cool. Now, what my colleague didn't know, my given name is actually Elizabeth. <laughs> Elizabeth gets a much better book, <laughs> a much bigger adventure, right? And in fact, there are two E's in Elizabeth. So there are, I, first I meet an eagle, and then I meet an elk, right? Because you, you, you imagine reading this story to a kid. What, another eagle, you know? And I, I then thought, well, I ordered Elizabeth for myself. And for my husband, I ordered Joseph. By the way, he's never been allowed to touch this book because <laughs> he even says he's never had he's never been allowed to read it. But that's true, so I don't mind. So Joseph ha also has an E in it. So they asked me if both these books were going to the same household, and if to prevent um, arguing over the letters, I would like yet a third thing for the E, and so we chose elephant. All right? So very very inventive, and of course every book arrives and is unique for that child. So the um, interesting story they actually launched in 2014. They, it was a group of guys, they uh, went, uh, actually it's two Israeli guys and uh, two guys from the UK, and the, um, they launched, they went on Dragon's Den, right, which is a TV show that gets funding for startups. And they got won 100,000 pounds on Dragon's Den, and by January, they had sold 132,000 books. Um, they still had only their 100,000 of, of funding, so by April, that had grown up to 500,000 books. By the way, primarily in the UK or in Europe. Um, by June of that year, they suddenly attracted the attention of Google, Google Ventures, and they got $9 million, which has changed their life quite dramatically, you might guess. They just signed an arrangement with the Roald Dahl um, estate. And so they're now taking the, like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the Roald Dahl stories, and those can now be told with the child um, and the child being part of the story. So that's a, we're still seeing that coming. Um, they've actually, I'll just mention here, they now have another book. We're not going to play the video because of timing. But um, they also now have a book called The Birthday Thief. And it's a, you give the child's birthday, and of course then it's a story about the birthday. And the birthday disappears, and of course there's a little adventure to get the birthday back. So think about this now. Think of the data that they're getting. Right, so they start out with just the name of the child, and they find out if these two children are in the same household, whatever. They're starting to build a profile. Right? I mean, it sounds kind of creepy, but it's true. They're able to start building a profile. Now they get the birth date. And you know, the birth date's going to be the same next year. There's a great opportunity to market once you know the birth date of the child. Right? So we see more and more um, very interesting things from, from these guys. The third example I want to share is um, very interesting. Uh, I must say, I personally, I hate the, the idea of digital marketing. I know that's really heresy today. But I don't think there is marketing without digital marketing. So I think that all marketing is di has digital in it. If there's a company anywhere that thinks they don't have to take the internet and mobile into consideration, they uh, probably are still somewhere in the last century. Um, but anyway, so this is an interesting example. This is a, a company, a case study from a company called Keds Kids. And Keds are shoes, right? They're like rubber soled canvas top shoes. Probably, you guys know Keds? I, I, you know, when I was a kid, we called them gym shoes, 
but you know, or tennis shoes. And I think we don't kind of have that concept anymore with Nike and you know, we have so many different types of shoes these days. We don't really uh, have that generic um, gym shoe anymore. But Keds has a, a line extension into kids apparel. So a bit like Gap Kids might be. Right? And so what they would do is every year, they three, four times, they'd send out a catalog to all, they had a loyalty program. So all the catalog would go out to all their members and show the new collection. And um, they came to their agency and said, you know, it's really expensive to print and send out this catalog. So we actually have a new idea. Can you just send a, uh, a postcard out to everybody and tell them to come into the store and pick up the catalog, that the new catalog is here and to come into the store? Why, thank goodness the agency said, this is the stupidest idea we've ever heard. Why is mom going to drive all the way down to the store to pick up a catalog? I mean, she has many other places to shop. She doesn't need to have kids, kids. It's not like the only store anywhere around, right? So they said, why don't we think about this in a little bit of a different way? So they said, we'll start with a postcard. We don't have a problem with that. We'll start with a postcard. We'll send a postcard to everyone. But we're not going to tell them to come into the store and just pick up a catalog. We're going to ask them to go to our Facebook page and design the cover of the catalog. In fact, they can put their own kids' photos on the cover of the catalog. They will say which store they want to go into to pick it up. And their kids will be the stars. I mean, the inside of the catalog will be the same for everybody. But on the cover, it will have the kids' photos. So here's a little video that explains that. We created a campaign for a fashion brand for kids. We wanted to take their existing customers in the real world and we wanted to migrate them to the fan page of the brand. We created 15,000 catalogs of the new collection that every mother could get in the store that she chooses, but her kids will basically star on the cover of the catalog and she will also write a personal message to them. So every mother during the first uh, launch of the new collection came to the stores and she got the catalog with her kids. Okay, so you heard that he, he said 15,000, 15,000 catalogs were actually printed with the kids' uh, pictures on it. Their, their database was 50,000, five zero. This is a staggering response rate. Now, at the beginning, they actually said one per customer. Mom was way smarter than this. So mom wants two. So she opens up two Facebook accounts, of course, right? And she's getting other people. And finally, somebody said, I mean, what are we thinking? I mean, it's not like somebody is going to sell catalogs or you know, it's not a side business for somebody. If mom wants to give catalogs with her kids' photos on it, what is she gonna, who is she giving them to? Grandmother number one, grandmother number two, favorite auntie, all people who might come in and actually um, buy gifts or you know, product from, from Ked's kids. So interesting result. Um, number one, instead of mailing out 50,000 catalogs, they mailed out 50,000 postcards. Then mom came into the store. By the way, I think it was over 99% redemption. I mean, mom is not going to have catalogs sitting there with her kids' photos on it and not pick it up. So they did actually ask for mailing address just in case, but they said there were no orphans. <laughs> no, no children were left behind in, in the shop. Um, and not only that, but they tracked the sale. And what they found was that when mom came in to pick up the catalog, she actually spent between 20 and 50 US dollars more than the average shopping transaction shopping cart, uh, shopping basket transaction was in, in this store. So this was a huge, huge success. Obviously, the catalogs themselves, those with pictures on the cover, were a bit more expensive each, but they, they uh, saved so much other money and, and made back the ROI on the, on the result. So I just really want to wrap up, because I think um, I have to be running nearly over time. <laughs> um, you know, this incredibly fast-changing world, and I think it's important that we we not be afraid to seize the day and, and change the way we think. To think about engaging customers, using data in a responsible way to create these unique 
relevant experiences that actually change the way they think about us as a brand and uh, even sometimes about themselves. I have to say the journey is not an easy one. We see companies, very rarely is there one campaign that everybody says, wow, we discovered it. By the way, if there were one campaign answer and everybody just had to do that, none of us would need to study marketing. So <laughs> fortunately, there's not just one answer for everyone. But I encourage all of you, you know, have a passion for, for engaging customers, embracing the new world, and doing things in new and different ways. Make sure that you're really um, courageous to, and committed to uh, you know, make this, uh, take that first step. It can be quite different for many companies to think in these, these, new, these new ways. But, and finally, keep the long-term view. Yes, you'll have some hiccups along the way, uh, sometimes short-term we have a big, sometimes it's a big success, sometimes it's not such a big success, but we need to be thinking about the long-term and stay in touch with how consumers are changing. Five years ago, we had no idea we'd ever be standing up and talking about things like this, right, as this is where the world is. The world in five or 10 years is an unimaginable place, in, in my view. So I hate to uh, end with uh, Charles Darwin, because we probably should have started with him. But anyway, just remember, you know, he, he says your survival of the fittest is not about being the strongest or about being the most intelligent. It's actually about being the ones that can adapt and respond to the changing environment around us. With that, I thank you all very much. Thank you, Lisa for our exciting talk and the most interesting examples she has given. Our next speaker almost didn't made it. He took two hours and 50 minutes to arrive this morning. Nothing to MRT. He flew all the way from Thailand, more than 1,600 kilometers away to speak today. He is the CEO of Brandy and Corporation, a brand centralization company, which basically is a brand consulting firm. He also passes on his knowledge about brand centralization through a successful Facebook page called Brandis, followed by more than 100,000 fans under the idea of being a brand builder. Because he believes that when people understand their own uh, roles and duties or their brand, society will then be collaborated and yet sustainable. May we invite Mr. Pia Chart to be on stage, please. All right, thank you so much for um, introductions of me. And nice to see you guys again. This is my maybe third time here. Thanks, Roger, for inviting me and MIS, of course. We got an exciting issue in the morning. I will tell you some. Uh, it's, it's really about digitalization, okay? But now we, we are waiting for changing something a little bit, you know. I'm personally um, loving Singapore, of course, you know, because flying to Singapore is shorter than, you know, taking my car from my home to the office in Bangkok. It's absolutely brilliant, you know, two hours, and mine is taking like four hours, you know, traffic jam in Bangkok is everything I wouldn't recommend to you, but foods are great, things are great. So as a um, you know, consultant to the Thailand Tourism Authority, I'm inviting you to Thailand as well. Okay, in, in reverse. Okay, please join us in Bangkok. They got a lot of issues today. Got many things today. Okay, well, today. Okay, I think um, I have heard so many speakers talking about digitalization. Um, it is not the future, it is today. Okay, like you're taking the picture, like you're taking everything. You know, um, right now, I'm, I'm not sure whether Nikon or Canon still be here with our digitalization, but you know, this is true right now. So the way we engage is quite different. I mean, in terms of knowledge, in terms of practice, is totally changing. And somebody who got a digital native mind will overcome these obstacles, but some will struggle in the way how to utilize the digital effectively. So let introduce myself more again, just in case I think not many people know me in person. Okay, so I'm working with brand corporation. We believe in brand centralization. We not believe in building only brand image or even, you know, design a logo. We believe in terms of brand centric transformation. Every single thing in your company should be driven by the brand where the value associated. So people in your team should engage to the brand to know what they, they try to 
achieved by the purpose, not the money they get paid. You know, things to deliver to the customers, not only to satisfy them, but having some good impact to the community surrounding to them. So that is me and my company working on that. And the second, as they told you before, I have a page, Facebook. Everybody got a Facebook, of course. Um, called Brandist. Brandist is a term, you know, means brand builder. Clearly, um, I think today we, we're talking about marketing absolutely, but building a brand is somewhat believing in your potential, believing in individual. So everybody here has a brand. I know the next topic we'll mention about personal branding. I wouldn't go in details, but you guys are brand. So when it becomes a brand, you know exactly what you do. You know your responsibility. You know that you need to release your potential to finish things not only from the task, but to achieve the purpose. So if every single unit in the society understand this knowledge, we will have a happy society, happy family, and even happy world, of course. No need to ask for sustainability, because you will care on what you're going to do and impacts you're going to have, and then you, know, you will change your behavior. And the last one that might be the things that brought me here is I wrote the book called Branding for Point O. And this book has been published in English, Thai, in Vietnamese, and um, going to be in Korea very soon. I'm going to, to have a speech on Korea tomorrow. Very busy week. All right, um, this is all about me. So this is all about me and Roger. And our beloved Professor Philip Cutler, and you know, please necklace his. Um, um, beautiful girls that way. Uh, well, we met up in the Japan last year, and we, we got a very strong connection. I'm now extending the business to Singapore in Asian coverage, and to grow up with these people, and thanks for you know, helping us. You know, the world become better to the good marketing and good branding. This is what we do. And this is the case in the morning. You see, Have everybody knows about Master. You know about Master? Okay, do you know about the last one? In the bottom line, it's called battery. <laughs> you know, it's redefined muscle. It is true. In my book, I'm talking about the cell actualization, but indeed, this one is damn right. Because I came here without the power adapter. So this morning was so busy with the Apple C port, you know. Apple make us confusing in life, you know. They got a little one port, but they need multiple ports to access, you know. Um, this is quite true. With our power, you know, I'm sacrificing myself, you know, I haven't eaten anything in the morning, you know, so, so food and safety is, you know, above this. So battery is everything right now. With our battery, your life will be, you know, struggle. So, just in case, prepare your mobile phone, prepare your adapter, so that it wouldn't bother your life. You can go to your self-actualization with the battery, okay? That's history in the morning, and thank you for the MIS staff. They are so helpful. They are, you were kind to me and the team. So this is, in fact, this is an evidence that really tells you that we are already in the digital edge. And in the digital edge, you are surrounded by this. I call this a digital mobile devices, including okay, your mobile phone, your wristband, um, what your, your headphone, your Bluetooth um, equipment, so many, lots of things. You know, in prediction from the WEF, 2020, you're going to have these kinds of digital equipment for person, more than seven equipment. Right now, how many, how many people have more than two? Two, two, okay, okay. See, somebody, somebody wasn't raising your hand, but you're taking a photo with two mobile phones, okay? Um, well, it's clear, it's, it's a fact. So this um, is a tool that changed the way we engage because it's really helping you to easily connect to each other. With this tool, this tent is, is meaningless. You can connect to the people in the US, you can connect to the people in Thailand, I seems like I, I am in Pattaya, you know Pattaya? I can talk to my families, I can talk to my friends. You know, I wasn't feel like I'm in Singapore. Because this, you know, helping us 
to reduce the gap, helping us to have more connected. And this is true. The T2 mobile devices will have an economic impact you know, as the highest disrupting technology. And you can see that the desire to connect to the internet anywhere is the strongest drive in terms of technology. You know, the economic impact is the highest. The other technology will be down, as you can see. This is right now happening, okay? And the way the brand engage to the customers before is quite different. If you want to reach a million people, you may create the advertisings, you know, pay the money for air times, and then you get to, you know, to reach a million people. A 100,000 people may be using the newspapers. Easy, okay? You just publish some ads. Okay, less than that, you might um, having a spot on the radio. You know, we have different way, but the way to engage in that time ten years ago is costly, and only strong brand, you know, a brand with a high investment can do this. A resource to access to the huge network is limited; not many brands can do. But right now, what you see with the digital mobile devices and the social media, things have changed. You see what have been, you know, the new things, we call this a new normal, you know what, because we still be able to connect with others, but the way to connect is sometimes, you know, it's for free. To reach one million people is for free, and it could be done over the night. So just like the case that the previous speaker told you, you can be the star over the night. And it's easier, and it's never been happening before like this. So right now, from limited opportunity, become an opportunity for everyone. You all here will be able to do this, you know, without any investment. So this is true at the present. The digitalization change the way we connect. But the way we connect by using the high technology will have a high touch or not? This is still the question. I mean, on the left-hand side, you'll be able to connect. On the right-hand side, will they engaging with you? This could be tell the story. Because of what? Because today, we are not compete for the money. Money is one thing, but right now we compete for the time. The application in your mobile phones, everything that so you download, the way you engage on the internet, every single brand try to have more time from you. If they can have you more times, they can ensure that you will pay the money for them sooner or later. Just want to engage. So why engagement is that important? Because time is much more valuable than money. That's true, but you know, time is like eating. We wouldn't pay attention on the time until we don't have time. That's true. All right, we compete for the time, but competing for the time wasn't that easy. You know, like um, you know, four billion people access to the internet, but they clearly said that the internet is not the world that they allow brands to easily or always communicating with them. You know, see, there is stats. I wouldn't go you know, figure by figure, but you can see that they got the stat to show you that they try to preventing the brands or advertising to get involvement in their life. And if you look on the right hand side here, it's about the brand perception level index, changing from, you know, stranger to become your brand advocate, to become a brand ambassador. You would see that there is something confusing here. Okay? People spend you know, much time on social media, two hours a day. But when they want to engage with the brand, they not go to the brand page. They talk with their friends about your brand. Okay, see? When they want to associate with their, your brand, the first thing is not look at the product and service you provide, but look at the shared values that you have in common with them. You can, you can call it relevancy, as the previous speaker said. And then when you make consideration, okay, 
they, they're happy. They're happy with your brands. Okay, if they have a share value with your brand and they want to make a consideration whenever they want the product and service, they will go to the brand that have a connecting that with stories or content or something they have known before. Okay. To, to be honest, saying that they're going to have a connection with the brand that they're familiar, not the stranger. And when it comes to decision, this is you know, humiliating because they touch and they, they, they believe in somebody. They have no idea who they are before. They look at the online reviews. They look at the stat on the internet. They believe in that way. But you know what? One person who loves your product and service will tell nine persons to buy your product and service as well. Okay, sometimes it might not be easy, you know, it might be difficult because only 25% actually doing that way. But at the end, you know what, you, you can listen about the brand from your friends, not because of the brand. Why this could happening right now? You see, we have a strong connectivity. Brand will be able to access to customer life 24 hours. But why? It is so damn hard. Because the digital world is not the world that built it up for the brand and customer. It's the world between customers and consumers. They're talking to each other. They just don't have this world because they want brand to access their life. But they have this world to talk to each other. So the relation has been shifted. You know, because of the, role, the, the roles of the brand shifted. The relation has been shifted as well. This is the conclusion based on my book, Branding for Point O. And you see the free point that people look at the experience rather than product and service. You see the role shift. If you are in the company, the company have to look at yourself as a brand and think about yourself as a brand. And you see from customers, they're not just customer anymore because of the technology foundation, because of the opportunity that's open for everyone, they start to doing something to, you know, to earn the money. They become a little entrepreneur. They start selling something online. They start doing some kinds of business that would be, you know, concurrently with the, you know, employment, concurrently with other jobs. But they did, you know, from stakeholders. Ten years ago, we we're talking about shareholders. We we're talking about people who give you money and you need to you know, giving them back in dividends. But right now, you look at the stakeholders. They all matter to your company because they are influencers. If you did wrong to them, they will just publish to the internet and see what will be your feedback. And you know, preventive is much better than let the situation happen and you take responsibility. The customers, of course, right now, you want customers. But you just don't want only customers. You want that customer to be your brand advocator, to talk something about your brand because their voices are much more effective compared to the voice from the brand. You see the, the um, you know, consumer generated content from the previous uh, you know, practice is quite obvious to say that this is true. And employees, right now, you know, Employees become brand ambassador, become somebody who talking about your brand, who engage others with your brand, who really defend the brand when it comes to the troubles, when it comes to the hard situations. That is quite true. And role shift lead to the relationship that rather than looking yourself as a seller and people, a customer as a buyer, you need to be a friend with them. We will go more in details about this. A competitor. Is that true? Do we still have a competition? Well, there is a competition out there, absolutely. If you're talking only one dimension about profitability. But indeed, the world is in need of collaboration. Because if you look at the same industry, and you look beyond the same industry, you see the higher purpose, and you see what? You are in the same industry. Sometimes, here we have digital agency might be. As a competitor, of course, when it comes to clients and service. But for the whole digital industry, you need to educate more people to understand what exactly a digitalization 
if people more educated, they easily adopt what you say, and you know, at the end, become your your clients. And the social values. We're talking about CSR ten years ago. We're talking about if you are profitable this year, and you have that small amount of money, doing something for CSR, donation, you know, doing something that that will return in a good brand image. But today, the social values wasn't enough. You have to look into your business a core competencies and execute the chair values from the beginning. It means you should have the ability to run your business concurrently with doing something good for the society as well. Because it lasts long, and it will eventually become a sustainability both for your company and society. Um, customer focus to inclusiveness. That I talk about that about before. You know, rather spending the money just to you know to acquire the customers. You have to think about the whole stakeholders. You have to think about the people in the community. You have to see their good life. You have to see whatever it takes because the you know digitalization help them to have more information, help them to be more engaged. Once they be more engaged, they will ask for more. Sometimes it's easy because they ask from your brand. Sometimes it's not easy because they ask publicly, and that will hurt you at the end. So far, so good. This is four point zero summary. And to show you that the high technology or digitalization somehow doesn't automatically allow you to have high touch. If you want to engage people more, if you want to have them with you as your brand community, what you need to understand, you need to understand these two touch. The first touch is touch their eyes. The second touch is touch their mind. Touch their eyes clearly. You know you have 24 hours to access to customer lifestyle, consumer lifestyle. But think about this. You know, how many people in here having more than 1,000 friends in Facebook? More than 1,000 friends. Okay, 500 friends. Okay, well, well. I guess um, I should say that you don't have to raise your hands and then get the answer. <laughs> All right, so so I it seems that everybody play on Facebook and got so many friends on Facebook. You see that if you go to new feeds, you would rather see the new feeds from everybody list as your friends, because we are now bombarded by the content every day. So only relevant content will be allowed to show up on your feeds. And this is true, you know, you got the chance and opportunity to access 24 hours, but it's not easily to really engage. If you want to engage the, the lifestyle, you need to become a friend of customers. And that is eight keys to become the friend of customers. I wouldn't go into detail, but these things are quite common, but just get it all together. You need to have the consultability. You know, sometimes people doesn't come to you to buy the product and service. They want the knowledge. They want to know what is the best product or what's the most you know, suitable product and service for them. They're not going to spend that time, but they will have a good feeling with you. When they want it, really, they just come back to you. No selling. It's consultability. There needs a consistency. You know, building a brand is not a short-term investment. And building a brand is not advertising. You need to be you know, consistent in every single dimension on your purpose. You need to have a strong purpose, unless you be just a leader business. You need to embed the purpose into people. And you have to create the process according to that purpose and people. And you need to have a platform and product that deliver the values and monetize the values from that purpose. And then you need to have a project along the way to keep the brand you know, alive in consumer lifestyle. And you have what? You need to have a comfortability, ability to talk to your customers and doesn't pleasure them, doesn't make them feel like, okay, I need to buy something. Just let them you know, be comfortable with you and they will come to, to your page, will come to your brand all the time. Adaptability, relevancy, of course, everybody talking about this. Transparency, what I want to mention. A transparency is the key 
you know, to create the brand storytelling. What is the brand storytelling? Um, well, back to the cats again. If you're talking about how to sell the product and service, it's just easily just have the good product and service. But right now, people ask you, people ask you how you produce this product, ethically or not? What is the source of your materials? Have have you do the trade good way with farmers? Have you do the trade good way with other suppliers? You know, and what is your concern? Does your process create some you know negative impact to environment? They, they don't take it when they're going to buy your product, but they will absorb it about your story all the time. And when they have a strong, good feeling enough to you, that will be a brand, not a product. So they're purchasing, uh, you, they're purchasing your brand, not because of product. You know, just like that. Okay, that is how you can have the high touch to their eyes and for their eyes. It's somewhat different. Because if you want them to be with you long enough, you know, you want to do CRM, you want customer loyalty, which somebody claimed that there is no loyalty in this world right now. But I still thinking there is, but it wasn't that easy compared to the previous and the past. You need to execute the shared values and unique values. For the business, I guess all here are business person or business representative. Building a brand and marketing is quite different because marketing is the tools that help you, you know, to sell more products and service and help you to achieve the you know, corporate profitability. But building a brand is somewhat you create another purpose of your company. When it comes to business, people say, well, you're standing for profit. But I want to show the public or to show the world that I'm standing for some other purpose with not only profit. But something more meaningful, I call this a shared values. And only shared value wasn't enough. You need a unique values to monetize that value and become, you know, a business achievement. And you could understand this model clearly when it comes to startups and, you know, digital entrepreneur business. They're creating the value first. They're talking about how their business can can do a betterment for society, for people, how they resolve the existing problems smartly and you know, in more effective ways. And then if people agree with that values, they start to think about business model, how to monetize those values, how to make the money from those values. And this is true in the sense of examples today, and it will become more intense tomorrow and next tomorrow. And this is how I suggest that in digitalization, engaging people is not automatically obtained. You need to understand how to touch their eyes and how to touch their minds. And finally, the goal is clearly. If you look at the mass law hierarchy, you would see that everybody try to seek for the self-actualization and what you, no matter what self-actualization is, they want a good life. Everybody want a good life. And to have a good life, you need to understand that not all technology is a matter to your brand. You need to be selective. Choose the right one. Which technology would be fully adapted to your brand. And use the technology to touch with customers. And if this combine perfectly, you will have high trust from the consumer back to you, and all in combination will create a good life in the end. So that is what my speech today, and I hope um, things will be go a little bit faster because I think we're running out of time. Um, just to give you, okay, um, well, we have a three state of building a business. First, you want to be different. You know, building a business, you want to be different so that you could you know, catch the eyes. After that, you want to be competitive. You, know, you need the ability to be competitive in the market. But you know, sooner or later, you're talking about sustainability. You want your business to be last long. And if you want your business to be last long, what you need to care first is not your business. You need to create the last long ecosystem. And that ecosystem, because of your effort, 
will help you become a sustainable brand and business. Thank you for helping me today. Have a good time. Yeah. Thank you, Pia Chan, for your talk about branding in the digital era. Our final and last speaker is a successful social media and public relations strategist, entrepreneur, speaker based in Singapore. He's also the best-selling author of a series of popular books, such as, for example, Social Media 24-7, Public Relations 24-7, and personal branding 24-7. He has spoken in over 20, 15 over countries within these five years and addressed more than 35,000 people. May we put hands together to welcome Mr. Andrew Chow. Hello. Okay, so after hearing the entire morning about a lot of brands from a lot of amazing speakers, I think I'd like to address... Whoops. I'd like to address a certain topic that is very close to everybody's heart. Now, what about personal branding? Now, before I start the topic, I want to share to you a story about digital transformation. The story of my 74-year-old mother. I took many years to convince her to be on Facebook. Finally, she's on Facebook. She started updating me on who my cousin is dating in Canada. And in the last six months, she asked me, son, teach me how to set up a PayPal. I said, why do you need a PayPal for? Oh, I want to try your e-commerce. I said, you can't have a PayPal because you don't have credit card. She says, no problem, use yours first. Huh? <laughs> Digital transformation sometimes will bring us surprises. But most importantly, I think for personal brand, there is a story. There is a story that all of us today in this room have, and I think the world deserves to hear from us. So I, ju I just want to share something very quickly about myself. You can check me out on LinkedIn. You can add me, please. Uh, I'm, I'm available on almost every platform, including Snapchat, one ID. I have written a few books. You can uh, also buy from Amazon. I'm not going to promote you today. Uh, these are some of the domains that I, I'm very specialized in, and I love to talk about that. Now, this is a slide I want to spend some time. I'm the person most qualified to talk about disruption. Do you know why? Because I self-disrupted myself a few times in my life. Really, really, the best way to prepare for disruption is to self-disrupt. I mean, self-disrupt. Okay, self-disrupt is important. I started my career after my army as an intelligence officer. So actually, I'm quite intelligent. <laughs> I work for MINDEF. I can't tell you what I do. It's very classified. And after that, I got sick of the civil service life, and I joined Kodak. During those days, Kodak was number one. Who has taken a picture using negative before? Well, you guys have been around for a long time. <laughs> there was one time I do a talk in NUS. Who has taken a picture of negative? Nobody put up their hand. Everybody is so young, right? It was fantastic. Kodak is a sad story. And it was at Kodak, I met my first mentor. Andy, are you still around? Andy. All right. Andy is someone I met 26 years ago. He's still my mentor. In 1997, 98, there's a very, very big event. Anybody remember? The Asia financial crisis, the Tum Yam effect, 20 years ago. And then, of course, I went to join MICE. I went to do a lot of events. And then in 2005, I, I self disrupt again. I went to become a matchmaker. Yeah, you heard me correctly. I was the only guy doing matchmaking. Mainstream only, yeah? Okay? So in 2005 to 2009, I met a lot of interesting people. And at 2009, I disrupt again. Why? Social media was on the rise. And I foresaw one day it will eliminate me from all the business. And it's true enough, today nobody's interested to find a matchmaker. Everybody download Tinder. So Lisa was correct, huh? Everybody wants to connect instantly. I want it now. Who wants to find a matchmaker when there's a technology that can connect me with everyone? And now I'm in the space of training and development, and I love to share stories about how I transform my life. So transformation 
It's the story of my life. Branding, personal branding. I like to define personal branding in very, very simple words. It's simply your uniqueness make visible with the right form. Now, in the dawn of mankind, cultures brand themselves. We have the Western culture, the Europeans, and the Oriental culture, China, Zhongguo. Two main cultures were trying to brand themselves and they connect. So there, is a, there was a rise of Renaissance and all these different periods. They are fine. They are fantastic branded culture. Next, in about the turn of this century or the last century, countries go in and brand themselves. They brand themselves by occupying another country, by conquering another country, by declaring war on each other. They brand themselves by seeing who is bigger, who is more powerful. If I'm more powerful, you bow to me, right? Okay? And then, after World War II, companies brand themselves. Companies want to be branded as someone who can create value. And the last speaker has talked a lot about creating value, all right? Connecting with people. And just before the dot-com era, employers join in. We have employer branding. People want, companies want to use their own brand to attract talent to work for them. Now, what is the final frontier of branding? We have culture, we have country, we have employer, we have companies. Now is the time for individual. Because personal branding is so important, it's already happening. If you are not doing your own personal branding, someone else is doing it for you. Even right now, that branding is called perception. We are supposed to manage perception. Today, I'm just here to share to you eight simple pieces to manage your perception online. You are all heroes of your own story. The world needs to hear from you. You are the differentiator. Whether you're in a B2B or B2C company, it's still people to people's business. You buy from a person. You connect with a person. You want to hear another person's voice. You want the physical touch, the personal touch. And the only way to be different is you bringing your brand alive. And today, the whole HR world is talking about employee engagement. It's talking about ambassadors in the company. And I'm surprised, in the last one year itself, you'll be surprised how many companies send their staff and management to personal branding workshop. So I'm going to share to you a few things. Two things we need to understand about brand, personal brand. One is the form. The form is what everyone can see easily, right? Just now, we exchanged LinkedIn. We can see my favorite pastime is to read people's profile. I'm serious. Whoever I'm supposed to meet, I always check out the LinkedIn and I make sure I memorize certain key info about the profile and I use it as an icebreaker. And this person, every time, they'll be very surprised. How do you know? Are you, were you stalking on me? Yeah, of course. I stalked you five minutes before I supposed to meet you. The next thing I want to share to you is this. There is a substance part. Substance of your brand takes some time to discover. It is a substance that determines the form. Substance is a feeling. It's a connection. It's an experience that they have with you. It's the love for you. What is the opposite of love? Hate? No. The opposite of love is indifference. I don't care anymore. I don't care about this person anymore. You don't hate the person. You just don't care. So our job is to make sure that people that matters to us care about our brand. So I'm going to share to you eight things you can do to manage your brand. All right? Number one, how to be reserved. You've got to take care of your own profile. Please, have you Googled yourself recently? Have you Googled your name recently and find on the first page besides your Facebook and your LinkedIn, what else is being said about you? You'll be very surprised, right? If you Google Andrew Chow in Singapore, that two person will come out. Okay? One good looking, one not so good looking. So you can find out who is the better looking one, okay? So, 
Uh, you have side side. Have you ever have you ever asked yourself? I have so many social media accounts. Can I go to one place and I find all the account of the person? There is a site called About Me. All right, About Me is very useful. It's still around. All right, this is my account. All right, all the icons are behind. All the icons are actually below, so you can see. But there's another one. This this even better. If you have star phone today, you just have to call Andrew. All right, but please don't call me right now, okay? Please don't call me. So, and I'm very thankful for One Smart Star because anywhere I go in Asia, people can connect with me. They can, they can contact me. They can choose how they want to connect with me. When I was in Malaysia, Malaysia partner, ah, Adrian. When I was in Malaysia speaking, I, had, I always share my deck. And the Malaysia partner is so kind to include a link. So, Whenever they go to my account, they can download the presentation immediately without even having any follow-up action. I don't need them to give me their email. They just download it, all right? Just to show that I'm a brand, that I don't need something from you to give you what you like. So, being seen is very important. I, wa I want to share with you one thing. How many of you, you have LinkedIn account? Do you know you all have a score? called the Social Selling Index. You go to linkedin.com slash sales you will see a number. You will see a number. You will see a number, and then you will see four different criteria of that number. You know what that means? Let me tell you. The first column is about your profile. How much you key in on your profile determines how much, how many points LinkedIn give it to you. Do, you. do you want to know whenever something is being searched, how does LinkedIn decide who comes first and who goes last? It's by the score. Hello? It's by the score. So you've got to increase your score. How to increase the score? Make sure your profile is properly filled up. Make sure you find the right people. If LinkedIn survey your connections and find that a lot of people are actually meaning next to nothing to you, the mistake, you can't serve them. Your score will be lower. Third one. Engage your insight. Do you share knowledge, content on LinkedIn as often as you do on Facebook? That is important. Today, I'm sure a lot of you learned something new, right? Yes? Yes. So, I hope to see some of your posting on LinkedIn. Because when you share with the right hashtag, please hashtag uh, what's my star, hashtag digital transformation, hashtag, M hashtag MIS, hashtag anything that's useful today, somebody will find you. Somebody will connect with you. Last but not least, relationship. When someone sends you a message, do you take one year to reply? <laughs> when someone likes your post, do you click on their profile? When someone asks you a question, do you take three months to get back to them? All these things help a lot in your social selling index. So don't take LinkedIn differently. By the way, LinkedIn is not a portal to look for a job. Although it is made that way, now it's for sales. If you sit in my workshop, I will tell you how to find these people. Okay, but not today. Okay. <laughs> Number two, the second P. First was profile. Number two, manage people and info. How many tools do you use here? If today, if my phone is lost, if somehow everything is erased, I can recover back instantly because I, I back up everything. How, a lot of you are taking pictures, right? Right now, I can tell you, you will never ever find that picture after three months. You want to know why? Because there's no way you can index it. Evernote. I take pictures with, in, with Evernote and I continue typing my notes. I just have to tag digital transformation. One smart star. I found it. In future, when I call out this name, this note that I'm taking will be out, including all the pictures you have taken today. We use technology, but we don't use it intelligently. Manage people and information. Do you want to save time posting on, on, on uh, all your social media? Buffer is cheap and good. It's actually good and it's free. All right? How about posting? Do you want to post, uh, do you want to post amazing content? Download this app, RIPL. All right, I don't know how to pronounce it, okay? I think it's RIP. It's an amazing app that you can do to manage content. 
manage your partnership. That's the third one. Manage the crowd, manage the network, manage the tribe. A lot of us have a lot of contacts. We are everywhere. You need to collate them together. You need to classify all your people into the following groups. How many of them are your mentors, your coach, your peers, your advocates, your friends, your followers, your passerby, your followers, your stalker, plus your enemies? All of them are included. I hope you have uh, only one or two enemies. Because if you have 10 to 20 enemies, you're in trouble. Your enemies are very interested in you. No? I'm very, very sure. They are the number one stalker. But you know what? You need to manage all these people and you need to be able to tag them accordingly so that when you call out these people, you know who to connect. Your tribe is the most important asset in your personal brand. Do you want to connect with customers easily with video today? You, you can try boom boom. Yeah, bomb bomb actually. Uh, bomb is very interesting. You can do any video. And sometimes you go to the landing page. This is to create a landing page. It immediately connect, immediately have lead generation, and immediately build your database. So if you're in some form of marketing, every one of us here is a marketer. You are a marketer first, then a dentist. You're a marketer first, then a speaker. You're a marketer first, then a lawyer. Why do I say that? 80% of the business is about marketing. But why are we not doing great marketing? It's because we don't understand branding. So Pia, I'm just uh, selling your book for you. All right, yeah. And after that, after you buy his book, please look for my book, okay? <laughs> All right. Number four, number four. You've got to master this art of managing publicity. Managing mainstream publicity. I know a lot of you heard, oh, mainstream is so old school. You know, why do we mainstream? Let me tell you something. Traditional PR give you the authority. Social media PR only give you authenticity. Why do I say that? Now, what which you would like to hear? You know? Oh, <laughs> Barik. Barik, if I tell you, you know, Barik, I saw you on Channel News Asia. You look great, man. Will you be happy? Of course you'll be happy, right? But Barik, if I tell you, you know, Barik, I saw a hidden video about you on YouTube. <laughs> you will be very, very frightened. Which one do you want to be on? The authority still lies in the mainstream media because whenever you have a big news, when the news didn't broadcast, it is not confirmed yet. Until today, it is still true. Until today, mainstream media still has the publicity. But it's the art of creating stories. So I want to share to you this. This was a story of Mother's Day two years ago. Now, is it common for women to go for Botox? Okay, please don't raise your hand. There's nothing special about women looking good. But I know the press would like to cover a story of a 72-year-old woman wanting to look like 27 year old. I asked my mom to go for it, and I got a nice write-up on, <laughs> on a Mother's Day present. All right. You know what? The doctor was very happy. She got free publicity. Right? Okay? So. There's always the art of managing purpose. You've got to understand that, all right? And this list is a list. If you need a big picture, this is the one. This is, the fr this is a list of all the PR sites in the world. You can submit your press release. Okay? Quickly download Evernote, all right? And this is the local one. Yeah, uh, Judy, where are you, Judy? Yeah, Judy, we're very happy. Judy for SPH. All right, so let's go, let's go, let's go to her. Okay, so this is a list. I think it's still valid. And don't forget, online publicity is about SEO backlink. SEO on page SEO is only telling Google who you are. Off page or off site SEO tells Google how credible you are. The more backlinks you have, the better. Make sure that a very famous blogger talk about you and link back to your site. Make sure you submit your site to credible sites so that it can link back to your own brand. Your own company brand, it's very important. Number five, we have to all learn to be an author. There's nothing great today to be an author. All of us can have e-books, and all of us don't have to be a traditional book writer. There are so many, there are so many options today for you, right? You, you, can, you, can, you can type 10,000 words, 
and have a book on Amazon, on Kindle, on Audible. You know, last month, I gave my set of books, three books, one and a half kilo, to my niece to reward her for doing well in PSLE. She's a very good reader. She, she, she's, uh, I think she's the top in school for essay writing. And she looked at my book, Uncle, got soft copy or not? And then I realized today, books become a PR item. You look at a lot of bookstores today, all right, it's a ghost town. Really, all right. So every industry is being challenged. Today, we have to be an author, but we have to do it differently, digitize it. Next one, I'm coming to the end, public speaking. There are so many things you can join. Your stories, let me tell you a story. If yesterday there was only me, M-E, yesterday, M-E is me. Now with disruption, today, I am M-E-S-S, -S. I'm a mess. Whether it's a good mess or a bad mess, you are still a mess. But in the future, you become M-E-S-S-A-G-E, -S -S message. You will form a story why a lot of things has happened to you and it's worthwhile writing. Hopefully, in the very far future, you become the messenger. So, first, there was me. Today, I'm a mess. Tomorrow, there's a message. In the future, I become a messenger. And that is the journey of book writing and public speaking. There are so many, from amateur ones, all right, Pecha Kucha is very interesting, 20 slides, 20 seconds, you cannot control, 6 minutes, 40 seconds, you're finished. All right, Tech Talk, 18 minutes, Toastmasters, prepare speech. If you want to go at the pro level, Asia Professional Speaker Singapore, all right? Now, by the time you go to Asia Professional Singapore, you'll find that there's nothing Asia about it. Because down there, it's like a global UN. Everyone is inside, all right? But when you go to the Western world, you don't find a single Chinese or an Asian. That is why I love to go to international stage. For all my international Western friends, I love you. But I love to thrive in your stage because a lot of you have thrived in my stage, okay? So that's just personal. Huh? Erase that if you're doing video, okay? All right, so number seven, charity. You can't be a brand if your heart is only on the business. You have to serve people. What is the use of being successful in all that you do? You have to have a heart for people. You have to serve charity. Be on the board. Donate, donate your money. Do something. And, there is, and there's so much about charity today that you can set up. You can set up your own charity. You can give through electronic way. There are so many things to digitize. And it is incredible. It is so incredible that today, do you know the church many years ago was hiding 10% of your earning you give to the church? You know what? A lot of organizations are copying that because it works. The key to unlock abundance is to sacrifice the top 10% of everything you have. During the old days, the farmer had to sacrifice the best 10% of the harvest. You know, to, for farmers to take the best 10% of the seeds, and burn it away, it's a waste because that is used to plant the next batch of crop. That, is, that shows that sacrifice temporarily unlocks abundance in the future. The last P I want to share to you is this. You have to determine your own price. If you are in business today, you don't have a boss to give you a pat on the back. Well done. You have to find your own recognition. There are so many ways to be recognized. This is the global one. And of course, this is the local one, all right? So there are a lot of personal brands that are going to be acknowledged tonight. So if you're a winner tonight and you're receiving an award, can I just invite you to stand where you are? Yeah, yeah, okay. They are, also, they, are, they, are, they are too shy to stand. So next time, if I say stand, you must stand uh, because it's personal brand, okay? So uh, anyway, let's give that a round of applause. If you would like to have an assessment of your personal brand, for the form, I guess the AP that I talk about, scan the QR code, don't take a picture, please take action. Don't take picture, take action. Scan this code, take that test, I won't spam you, I will submit a report to your email. And last but not least, please call Andrew. 
star 263739. You will get me. Don't call me, just send me an email. I love to connect. Thanks for being here and have a great day. Thank you, Andrew Chow, for his very exciting personal branding advice. And uh, speaking about the first uh, uh, area he was talking about, you know, doing a profile, I did a search on Google about myself. I didn't know I was very famous, actually. Um, the only disappointment was, my name is Mickey He, I found Mickey Mouse. <laughs> right. Uh, next, we will have a short plenary session uh, with uh, Mr. Roger Wank, uh, the President of Marketing to Singapore, being the moderator. And uh, may I invite the earlier speakers to be on stage to share the experience as well, including um, Mr. Kerry Wee. Uh, please come on stage as well. Okay, I'm going to take on the mic. So, Kerry, you please up on stage. And of course, David and Professor Ang. Yep. It's just a quick one. And Priya, please. And of course, our favorite Andrew. Come. <laughs> okay, those that are leaving right now, you know lunch is waiting outside for you, yeah? So, you leave too early. You may not be in time for lunch anyway. <coughs> Take a seat. Yeah, I promise a very quick one. I know it's, uh, it's lunch time, so um, I was told that uh, to do this very quickly. But anyway, uh, thanks to all the speakers and uh, including our friends uh, Carrie from One Smart Star. Now today we we hear very interesting topics about uh, digital transformation and uh, digitalization itself. Now. Um, before I open up the questions to the floor, I just have one question for each and every speaker. Perhaps you want to take turn to answer to this itself. Now, um, we've seen a lot of rejections, you know, about uh, digitalizing, uh, on, even on a personal side, uh, from a company's point of view also. So, um, as a subject expert matters uh, in this area of digitalization, what would be your advice uh, for someone who wants to switch from traditional approach to digital, because this is about digital transformation, isn't it? So, how can you do it, or how should you do it? And if you were to miss the boat, what will happen? Probably starting from Priya. Okay, it's quite a tough question. Take, take just like one minute, okay? Um, I think for me, digitalization is about understanding yourselves and understand how to connect with others. So people always looking at how to connect with others. People spend less time understanding yourselves, understanding your values. It's just a value system, it's not just single values. So try to, to, to bring it inside out, try to understand how valued you are, and please be proud of who you are. Even your company, you know, every single brand has a story, has what you have achieved in the past and present, and of course in the future, what you're gonna do for yourself for the people surrounding you, for the society, and wrap it up, brief it up, and then try to find a way to connect with the with customer out there. Please understand the customer journey, and everything will be fine with the digitalization. Yeah. Okay, um, there's a sound bite here, I guess. Um, I would say that if you are coming from traditional uh, marketing, I think you're in a very good position. You should maintain all your values. Um, the one thing that I think that digital can offer a lot, which uh, the traditional cannot, is analysis, um, measurement, counts. You should be asking all, and I mean all the hard questions regarding analysis and counts. Count all the, the responses, measure how people uh, react, do they respond, what do they do. These are things not available in the traditional mode, but it can be done online. Um, and I think you should take serious advantage of that and ask really critical questions of your group of people there. I will say uh, from our experience the difference between the traditional marketing and the digital marketing. Before, when we used to do business, we were concerned with the professional people, talking with the people dealing with the billboard, with the newspaper writing. Today, it is very important to understand every single person, he has something to say. We can learn from him. He particip participate in the digital marketing. So we learn about that a lot, and all the time we try to get a group of, group of people to ask them what is the reaction and to learn from them. Because everybody is post on Facebook, Andro Chai says he's doing in LinkedIn, you think it's a, for, for a job, but no, this is a marketing platform. So you need to listen from everybody, from the individual, 
from my youngest people to older people to learn a lot and to know how to modernize your businesses. Well, <clears throat> you have heard uh, from my co-founder on, on the engine technology. I think in, in Asia's perspective, or, or rather in Singapore, uh, it's about implementation. You have heard, you hear a lot of things. I, I guess the stuff is about how you're going to embark and implement those technology and knowledge that you acquire. Like for us, one smart start Asia, um, where we gather about uh, what can be done, but good technology sometimes can sell. You need to have good strategic uh, partners. For example, today, uh, with MIS, we, we plan to have an acknowledgement, MOU uh, strategic alliances, and then with QBE Singapore, we have a partnership with QBE. So what we're saying here is that when, when the clients subscribe to us, we actually provide them bundle services. And something that they have not thought before, or it's too expensive to embark on. So with this kind of bundling service that we put forward to, to home office, individual, uh, SMEs, and large uh, corporations, this becomes possible. So this is about implementation, uh, about getting started and getting on the way. Uh, like what Andrew said, me, mass, message, and messenger, right? So I think that's the key message when we, we embark uh, and, and implement here in Singapore. Okay, I think I have the mic. Um, okay, mine is very simple. It's not a technology, it's not a digital technology. It is managing the effects of technology. Because most of the time, it's easy to learn something new as a skill, as a knowledge. But to, con to convert that into an attitude, it's very, very challenging. I like to share three Vs with you. You've got to manage these three Vs with digital transformation. The first V is volume. You've got to handle the volume of data coming in. Number two, handle the velocity, the speed of info coming to you. Number three, you need to handle the variety. Because info are coming from everywhere in all shapes and sizes, in different forms. You've got to manage all this. And with transformation, you have more power. The crux is how to use that power to convert info into intelligence. I think that is the crux of the whole matter here. Okay, so I take it from the inside, so just to summarize that. First, I think uh, for, through digital transformation itself, you'll be able to enhance value, including branding. And of course, from digital itself, we are able to get analytics out of it. And so that, you know, it will be, we'll be able to derive something that's uh, meaningful, uh, you know, for us to serve our, our customers or our clients. And on top of that, and how you manage that, okay? So I, I probably will open uh, to questions from the floor itself at this time. So there are mics on both the aisles. So if anyone from the floor would like to ask our panel of experts on any questions, anyone? Now, if not, then I'm going to throw the, the next question to the panel itself. And this probably will be my last uh, questions for today. But um, having said that, don't leave because we're going to have a very interesting performance, which I think the last I've seen the performance was being done in front of Dr. Uh, our, uh, our ex uh, President of Singapore, uh, Dr. Tony Tan. So he's preparing, so stay on. It's going to be very exciting for that performance. And of course, uh, you, you will see there's a digital backdrop there. We're talking about digitalization anyway. So please take your pictures before you leave, okay? All right, so free pictures to be taken. Now, my last questions for today uh, would be um, what is the next level um, after digitalization itself? Or is there one? Or um, how will this uh, trend stay on? Uh, so can you, can you give us an insight towards digitalization? At what, uh, at what it, uh, perhaps in future itself, what comes after di digitalization itself? Okay, well, the day after digitalization, it's like the, com, you know, the question when I will ask, what is come after 4.0? Is it there is 5.0 or not? It's actually what we can call the, the hybrid. You know, the understanding how digital, physical, biological, and mechanical living together harmoniously. In the future, you will see that it will be more intensive. You know, we will have more robotics because of AI development. I used to be in the AI field. I'm an engineer in the background. So I know AI since 10 years ago, but it just, you know, comes up in the public because of robotics become more, more obvious. 
And you know, biological, you know, people get evolving all the time. You know, uh, we become in Thailand, we have age society. We have much more people aging than 60 years old. You know, they 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 got something to do with them. Okay, and digital, of course, digital turning as a bridge to to close the gap all of the things. And don't forget that we're living in digital in physical world. We should have to eat. You know, we contact with the people, we talk, we live in physical world. So these four worlds will be seamless connecting together. And people who understand the new journey that I call hybrid consumer journey will understand how to get people in the right time, right space, as they say. So understanding the future is about understanding the hybrid system, understanding the whole world together. Okay. So let me begin by telling you that I cannot predict what my wife will do. <laughs> you asked me to predict the future, so I'm probably wrong here, right? <laughs> Um, I would say that um, we're probably having kind of excitement over uh, digital as well as AI, machine learning, neural networks and so forth. So we are kind of excited now, uh, but if you look at kind of history, um, nothing old is really abandoned, nothing totally left out. I mean, we're still using uh, books, we're still using radio, okay, true Telegram is no longer around, um, but by and large, we don't really abandon everything from the past. So I agree with Piyacha that we will still have some kind of hybrid. We are probably in a Simon stage, and we might probably shift back so that we are a little bit more using sort of traditional, um, you know, whatever's been there before. That is why I said that at the beginning uh, uh, earlier that if you are from the traditional uh, marketing, you are in a very good position. Uh, things will, like bell bottoms, probably will come back at some point in fashion. You know, when I'm thinking about that, first of all, I'm afraid to call it the future because I'm afraid with what is coming next. I must tell you a short story. When, when many years ago, when my father came to me and I saw me, uh, it was the first e-fax machine of HP. And he was back then 90 years old, and he saw me sending a fax. He said, David, what are you doing? I said, I'm sending a fax, and whatever this letter, he will get to my engineer on the other side. He says, unbelievable. Where you are going to do? And I'm talking about the fax machine. Today, with the future, I believe very soon, and I agree with what the professor says, we will go back because I'm traveling all around the globe. We mentioned we have a local partner in 77 countries, and I'm happy to say that me personal, I have a map in my, my office. I visited 112 countries already. And I can tell you there is a trend in Costa Rica. You will hear me saying Costa Rica, Costa Rica, because they are opening a place in the jungle that you can go there, release your phone, no connection to the internet, just be like 100 years ago. And I believe very soon we'll find ourselves moving to that place because I really feel that we catch to the top. We cannot move more in that technology. Well, I remember 10 years ago uh, when I was uh, in Thailand and I spoke about uh, the new things, uh, what is in. Uh, a question that I asked the audience, I say, hey, who has got uh, a smartphone, you know? Everybody just stare at one another because those days, 10 years ago, smartphone is like a very expensive device. If today, if I ask you in this room, who has got feature phone in your hand? Who has got feature phone? Old phone? World change. Singapore statistics today, 8.3 million mobile phone subscriber. Statistics shows that 7 in 10 social media server lock in on the go. Double the habit of the world. The world probably spent 35% of them serve the social media on the go, but Singapore is 7 in 10. So I'm quite sure in 2020, the number of mobile phone subscribers probably exceed beyond 5 billion. So what does it mean? It means that we have to be in that space commercially to make it viable, feasible for us to be in there. If we are not in that space because of some unique reasons, then we probably somehow stay on in a mess all the time, okay? I think what comes after digital transformation is digital internalization. Because I think we have to internalize technology, internalize the path to the future. We have to take stock now before the next transformation. Because if we don't internalize, we are not going to appreciate how far we have done, how far we have progressed in technology. We all need to be good communicators. Let's face it, we have so much technology now for you to communicate. I'll give you an example. My niece, 
and she texts me. She just texts me with, are we going this? Are we doing that? And I always reply, hello, I'm your uncle. Please greet me before you send the first message. I'm very particular because all the tools in the world is supposed to make us more relatable, not sending a message. And that is why if you take it as a messenger, you can expect to be fired by SMS. And your employer is not accountable to you. We have to be good communicator. Only internalization, then we can move forward. And a famous CEO once said recently, I am not afraid of robots, AI, thinking like human. I am more afraid of human thinking like robots or AI. <laughs> that is very true, right? Because transformation doesn't mean we become robot. We ought to be more human so that we can, we can humanize technology. And that is really about branding. If today is all about technology, then whoever knows the most will win. We don't want technology to be an elitist separator. Because in 20 years, if you don't hop onto the wagon, you know next to nothing. And information is locked up by people who hold and know and know how to leverage technology. So that is my last takeaway. Well, thank you. I think, um, I think from the panel of uh, speakers itself, I think you know that, and thanks, Prof, uh, for validating the fact that traditional marketers like me still have a place <laughs> for future. <laughs> okay, I think uh, let's give a round of applause to our panel of speakers today. Thank you so much. But before we go, I think uh, I just want to announce that uh, MIS is already on one smart start solution. And so how can our audience here get onto the platform to view our MIS uh, one smart style apps? Okay. Uh, I'm sure you have smartphone, not feature phone, right? Who has got feature phone? Don't have. So you have smartphone, right? So all you need to do is go to your app stores, go to Google Play, key the word star phone, two words, star space phone, download, download it, and then you open it. Just now David played the movie, just dial star MIS, or on the UI itself, you can see on the top left corner, you see MIS, you click on it, then you see the profile, the landing page of MIS. Okay, thank you. Now, if you would like that kind of uh, profile, online profile or engagement with your audience, um, I think Carrie and David will be here even after the conference itself uh, outside. So, yeah, if you like that for your company or for your organization, please approach them. Okay, so nevertheless, thanks everyone. Thank you so much. We'll go on to our next performance. Please stay on, please stay on. Thank you, panel speakers. Please be seated. Uh, we will move on with the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding. The Marketing of Singapore seeks to ride this digital transformation wave so as to enhance its appeal to all businesses today, especially SMEs. This is where one smart star comes into the picture as an option for businesses. The star phone primary functions as visual IVR for voice calls, allowing a simple selection of functionality or final destination and executing a call or getting the service by pushing a tab or a button on the customer's smartphone to any social media online services or form, website, online store. The signing of the Memorandum of Understanding with One Smart Star Asia marks the strategic alliance between MIS and One Smart Asia today, 4th December 2017. Now may I invite Mr. Roger Wang, President of MIS, and Mr. Kerry Wee, President of One Smart Star Asia Private to be on stage, please. And the witness, Co-founder, Mr. David, as well as QBE Singapore. To be on stage, please. The back, you've got VJ cable. You may now begin the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding. The exchange of the documents, please.
Thank you. Some photography. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please be seated. Okay, the one thing that I learned today is about the importance about being visible. And uh, I thought one of the key items that was highlighted in today's session was using high technology for high touch, high tech to achieve high touch. And I thought that was one of the most important points I got from today's session. Uh, I'm not new to digital marketing, but that was a very fresh insight for me. Well, the one thing that I like about the Star Phone is the fact that uh, it accentuates someone's personal branding. Uh, for you to be memorable to that prospect, you know, you don't really need something from him or her. Uh, basically, is she or he needs to get something from you, right? So it's a very, uh, it's a one-stop process to get connected to the people that you are looking for in your business. Okay, if there's one thing that I'd like to do after today would be to use more technology to be to use more technology to get more personal with your with my target audience because i think there's a lot of digital marketing technologies out there but people are not using it in an optimal way i think if they use it more towards uh, getting uh, quote unquote intimate with your potential clients i think that would be the best way in and uh, i'm looking forward to use technology in a more productive way Today's uh, seminar has been most interesting. I have learned a lot. I must say every speaker is very, is very entertaining and interesting in their own way. The one important thing that uh, struck me most is the importance of staying relevant uh, in this uh, dynamic world of digital transformation. And uh, staying relevant means keeping yourself up to date and uh, learning is a journey and not just learning but implementing it and uh, you just have to keep up. Second question is, what's one thing about one smart star that you like? Okay, this is a very interesting app. Um, I think the, the one word that, like, that I like to choose is the word convenience. It's so convenient, you know, it's just one short code and you can get everything that you want. So it's like an all-in-one, one-stop shop solution. One final question is, what's one thing you will start doing after today? One thing that I'd like to start doing today is to go into the app, um, find out more, uh, go to different features, and uh, I'd like to read more about it actually, and I need to stay relevant. Oh, the, the things that I saw and, and I see people that present in the stage that I will learn is uh, digital marketing is a future, but of course we might know how to use it properly yeah, and use it to our own advantage. Like big data is one of the important tools, but we know that we can collect big data everywhere. But how to collect the right data and use it rightfully, yeah, benefit to us is the most important thing, knowledge. Yeah. In Malaysia, we have managed to uh, break through with one smart star is we managed within two months to uh, sign up 500 condos and uh, 500 condos we are talk we are looking at almost 600 thousand of uh, views so now we are getting big brands to look at us and they are keen to sign up with us to advertise in our one smart star platform now uh, we have we have uh, prepared all the brochures all the sign up forms and uh, we are also doing rounds with uh, Facebook advertising and the big brands also. Start OSSN 6776. You can find us there. Thank you. What well, a couple of things that uh, the speakers were giving an interesting talk, but uh, personally, uh, one that interests me was particularly from uh, Andrew Chow on the personal branding. Something that uh, I knew but uh, did not really pay a lot of attention. So I think it's good. It's a good thing that I come to realize that uh, 
building up personal branding is important. Yep. I think QB uh, is fortunate to be uh, able to meet up with uh, uh, One Star uh, in the sense that uh, they are doing a lot of uh, digitalized uh, initiative, which is very important for uh, branding and marketing. And in QB, we actually have developed a lot of SME business, uh, also uh, doing a lot of research work. And we do understand the uh, insurance requirement of the SME and how to approach them. It is a big uh, question that's always in my mind. I think with the one-star approach, uh, it opens up uh, and makes it much easier for the SME to know us better. The key takeaway probably uh, is to understand what is the future requirements of the uh, digitalization. And QB is also a company that should move a lot into that area uh, because it's going to be the future world of insurance marketing. And in terms of the uh, uh, SME account, I'm sure that uh, they'll be very happy to know that we are providing a cyber insurance coverage uh, for them. I think that there's a lot of uh, uh, ignorance about cyber insurance for SME. And this is a good time in the collaboration for SME to be given a so-called free cover. It is a very basic cover and that will give us a lot of opportunity to talk to the SME uh, on the extension of cover. So that will give them uh, more information about the requirement. Thank you very much. Yep.